Ghost Runners Podcast back at you again, episode one, two, one. And uh, if you don't know, we are on YouTube, um, youtube.com. Um, and if you have never seen us on YouTube before, you might look at me right now and realize, oh, he's a pretty big dude, pretty large guy, pretty hefty boy. Above average. Um, and, you know, there's been people who will comment on our jean shorts uh, videos, some really nice things. Uh, some people have a little bit of constructive criticism for me. <laughs> um, and I'm just here to kind of kind of uh, help clear the air a little bit, Jake. Yeah, some like parameters. Yeah. So I so here's here's the big thing is I'm OK being called big. Big Daddy, great. I don't want to be called fat. A big Daddy, it sounds like a guy you want to go hang out with, you know, go get some milkshakes with Big Daddy. Yeah. Fat Daddy sounds like a discount firework you find on the side of the road in, you know, <laughs> rural Missouri. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, you want to get one of the Fat Daddies? Do a deal on Fat Daddies. Come on, we got three for five here. <laughs> and so I just, just let you know, big is good, fat, no thank you. All right. Are there other... Well, let me ask you some other like words, maybe that like could be iffy, like, okay. oh, maybe this is good. Maybe this is not like, okay, tubbo. Is Tub that something? No, is that I fall don't want, no, I don't want tubbo. Does not fall in the category of acceptable? No. Okay. What about something like, uh, one of Shrek's cousins? <laughs> no, I don't like that one. No, that one doesn't. Okay. What about or ogre? Any, oh, any ogre theme? Don't do any ogre theme things. No ogre theme. No. Okay. No ogre. Okay. What about like the target demographic for every weight loss commercial? <laughs> no, just because no. that was too long, not because it hurts my feelings. <laughs> it's just wordy. It's just, yeah, it just doesn't go up. It doesn't flow off the tongue like Big Daddy. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, ooh, this okay. This one's shorter. Yeah, Jabba the Hut. <laughs> no, no. Okay, okay. What about um, like rejected cast member of my six hundred pound life? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh oh, ooh, I, ooh, I think this tight beat means that it's going down with some random thoughts and white meat too. Midwest best friends eating fast food on repeat. So come along, let's have some fun and go ahead, get on your feet, cause it's the Ghost Runners Podcast. Every Monday morning, we're taking back Ghost Runners Podcast. Hey, we all have those things. We do. I feel like, well, as long as we're on Gene Schwartz comments, there's one girl who just will not stop calling me cutie redhead. Cutie redhead. which it, That makes me feel weird in a different way. <laughs> Clarifies that Jake is a redhead, though, according to Barbie. Once and for all. Take that, Connor Lamb. <laughs> That's right. See, Lamb. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, hey, it's a new week. It's a new week, cutie redhead. Happy <laughs> <laughs> uh thanks for choosing to listen to our podcast yes it's it's exciting times if you're listening to this then i successfully made it into hawaii <laughs> even though they make it as hard as humanly possible <laughs> to go to another u.s state it's amazing like how much hawaii feels like a foreign international place yeah every time i go because to hawaii of them i'm it's like their fault. i gotta find my passport right. i'm like wait no <laughs> no i gotta like lo notify my you know uh my, phone, my, my mobile provider yeah <laughs> tell my credit card company i will be spending money internationally let boost mobile know right Oh, man. Yeah, but it's just America. So, yeah, hopefully, as you're listening to this, I'm in Hawaii. Hopefully, as you're listening to this, I'm 30 years old now. Yes, dude. Happy birthday. Actually, I think no matter what, when you're listening to this, Justin, though, Justin, our editor, he might be listening to this when I'm not 30. Yeah, so, Justin, How quick do you work? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday, man. How was it? Thanks, man. Oh. How's it, how's it feel to be 30? Oh, it was... How does it feel now? Yeah. Um, it, feels, it feels fine. How does uh, it feel to think that you're going to be 30 in five days? Four days? I don't know what date it is. That's okay. Yeah, I think, I don't think turning 30 will be that bad, but the next year of my life, mm -hmm. when everyone asks how old I am and I have to say 30, that is going oh, okay. to suck. <laughs> That's going to suck. Just lie. Like we're not That's 30. What, yeah. like, there's just no possible way that we could be 30 years old. There's no way. When do you start feeling old? That's what I want to know. I think when you start like just doing like boring things, like when you're bored. Like right now when I'm bored, I go like, I'm active, I'm fun. I hang out yeah. with different groups of friends. But if I start like vacuuming when I'm bored, mm. I'm old. Yeah. I feel like on paper, I'm very old. <laughs> like, like I play pickleball, which is not that active of a sport and I get done and I'm kind of sore. <laughs> I, you know, wake up really early in the morning. I, some, I don't vacuum, but I'll clean every once in a while. Like I'll, I'll be around the house walking around, not knowing what to do. And I see some stuff that's needing to get picked up. I'll clean it up. But that, I never that sounds a little more normal for like normal yeah, human behavior. Yeah, sure, sure. But psychologically, I've, I don't feel one bit any older than I did when I was like in college. Yeah. 
And I don't know if when's when's I going to. And you're and married two with kids. two kids. Yeah, yeah. it's not like yeah. I'm like like yeah on paper like I and I still feel like I'm like my my parents like little son. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I can't stand up to my dad. <laughs> I'm 30 years old. I should be able to stand up to my dad if I disagree with him. Do your parents still get you like quite a few Christmas gifts? Yeah, me too. Plenty. When does that stop? Never. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's unreal. Yeah. It's like it's like I should be like providing them with some really nice things instead of them. And I do give them a gift, but they give me way more gifts. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's just circle of life. Is that what that song's about? That's what it's about. I, I think. think so. Material mm-hmm. things. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I kind of have gone on a deep dive of trying to find new podcasts. And one of them is a podcast all about the 90s. And I listened to one about the Lion King the other day. How was it? It was not that good, but it was informative. I, I didn't I kept listening to this podcast and I finally was like, this is not good. You're like, I just I think I don't like it. Yes, <laughs> dude. I and, and I'm not trying to be like our podcast is so great because I understand that it's different for everybody. But like, man, is it hard to find a podcast that I enjoy out there? <laughs> like, like people recommend it a lot and I struggled to find some good ones. Really? I just and, and I need to give it probably more of a chance. Maybe if you listen to our podcast for five minutes, you're not going to like it. But like some of these ones, I was like, I'm done. I don't like this at all. I'm not I'm, I'm not going to keep listening to this. It's not funny. I'm right there with you to the point that I don't even really try out new podcasts anymore. And it's hard to find ones like <laughs> like I tried to like just browse the other day and it's not easy to like just look around. I don't know. I'm trying to think of a good I feel platform. Like you don't think it's easy to find podcasts? Well, it's easy to find podcasts. It's not easy to find like, like, like it's not easy to find a nineties podcast that looks somewhat oh, well done. I see what you're saying. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. like, there, cause, cause actually what happened was a ghost runner fan. Thank you for recommend your recommendation. Sent me something about the nineties, but I f- forgot what the actual name was. So I was just like, Oh, I'll just look up nineties podcast. That's not a very easy way to look them up. Like, yeah. And I tried to even just Google it. Like maybe it was an article somewhere. Anyway. I like YouTube is really missing out on an opportunity to like, have an entire part of your website dedicated to podcasts. There's yeah. nothing about that. Like yeah. YouTube is the like the second biggest search engine in the world. Like yes. behind Google. And it's isn't it owned by Google? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So like so have it seems like it has the podcasts there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Anyway, how was your week? Uh week's been good, man. Week's been uh just spent a lot with family, which I love. I love that. Um You love your family. I do. I do love my family. That's Actually, cool. but I will say I will say I had you know how last week you were like, do you ever like just have those moments where like maybe you kind of regret having kids? You're like, no, I have to. I have two <laughs> right now. Um, <laughs> and they're little ones. They're, they're mostly joking. But the other night, I think, it, yeah, it was like thunderstorming out. And Hattie has just recently become really afraid of lightning. And and she never Not like thunder. I don't think so. Really? I think I mean, obviously, they're one and the same. Yeah. But I think she's more scared of like the flashes and stuff. OK, because um, she sleeps through the thunder just fine. But if she wakes up and she sees that lightning like it was. It was past like the big part of the storm when she came into our room, but it was still like flashing. It has been storming a lot here. Yes. I got has. some stuff to say about that. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll get to it. And so she, she never does this, but she came into our room and like slept in our bed and halfway through the night, I thought to myself, well, first of all, I thought it was so sweet, like feeling her next to me, like kind of cuddle up next to me. Best feeling in the world. Like somebody falling asleep next to you is, I don't care if it's your daughter, your son, your grandma, best feeling in the world. Mm-hmm. But my gosh, I, she went from up and down to like seriously horizontal. Uh, she moved the Tetris and piece. she, you know, how like that, like back in like eighth grade when people would come up behind you and like stab your sides. Packer. Yes. She packered me all night with her feet. Oh yeah. You got to flip that thing around. Yes. And, and I, I did, I like forcibly <laughs> moved her and she would just go back there and it's like, she's asleep. So I can't, I don't want to wake her up. Yeah. But I thought to myself, I don't like that you're here right now. <laughs> Why did I have kids? <laughs> Why did I have you? Um, and then also there's a small one, but Bo is really obsessed with my wallet lately. So anytime I leave it out, he like takes all the cards out. And the other day I was about to pay for something at home Depot uh, and I didn't have any form of payment <laughs> because my son had taken out my credit cards and somebody didn't put them back. And I don't know if it was me or my wife, but I think I do know that it was my wife. But anyway, <laughs> yesterday so, at Chili's to go, I was yeah. behind a woman inside because they, they've done a, they stopped coming to the cars like they used to. Just you, in general, you guys know they you came got, to the cars before COVID. Yeah, that was That's the thing. Silly, C- great curbside, curbside to go. Yeah. yeah, they've stopped. They don't do a very good job of that now. They ask for your car, but they don't care. You have to go inside. Anyway, okay. all I'm trying to say is about like not paying. A woman is in, in front of me in line. She's ready to pay. She's like, "How much is it?" He's like, "You know, eleven ninety five. She goes, "Okay," and then goes out to her car, and then goes and gets exactly eleven ninety five from her car. Yeah, and then I like go up to pay. He's like, "Ah, we're actually in the middle of her transaction." Like she just came up. 
just to like get a quote on the food <laughs> quote. and then went back to her car. Uh, and you're like, can you just cancel that one real quick? Yeah. Like how I, hard is it to like re get into the transaction? I have a credit card. It'll be really fast. Oh man. You had to wait behind this woman to like go to her car and count out 1195 and change and then come back. It was that's, awesome. That's too bad. Yeah, it was. Luckily you weren't probably in a hurry. I'm sure, but I wasn't um, in a hurry, but it was at the tail end of like a six hour drive. So oh, I'm like, I'm yeah, just yeah, ready yeah. to be home. I'm ready to eat. Right. Yeah. Dude, that's, yeah, the last, like, 15 minutes of a drive like that are the longest 15 Sometimes minutes. Sometimes the sleepiest. Yes. Which is tricky, but. Yeah. Um, Catherine, I don't remember how we got on this t- subject the other day, but we were talking about, like, let's, not, maybe not Chili specifically, Applebee's specifically. Like, did you grow up going to Applebee's? We went to Cheddar's quite a bit. Okay. Which Cheddar's. is the same place. Great example. Great yeah. example. Yeah. Very, like, just bar and grill type place. American. I grew up going to Applebee's a lot with my family, and I had great opinions of Applebee's. And I do not have great opinions of them anymore. Do you feel that way towards Cheddar's? Like, like I, I don't know. I don't know if it's me being a little bit more of like a high maintenance person. <laughs> I don't think it is. I think it's more like the quality of Applebee's and like a lot of these places that we grew up really enjoying are going downhill. Hmm. I don't know about Chili's because I haven't been there in a while. I know that you love it. Get so. the chicken, Cajun pasta, no yeah. tomatoes. That's what I used to always get when I went there. Good. It's or yeah. I've got them with tomatoes. Like though. when I was nine, I got that. <laughs> <laughs> My sister used to work at Chili's, so we went there all the time. But lucky. Um, yeah. Anyway, I, I don't know. I don't know if anybody has any comments on that. Let me know. I, it's just one of those things where it's like, am I just becoming snobbier in my yeah, old age yeah. as like I make more money and I can afford other things? But I don't think I am because I still go to Chipotle and Chick-fil-A all the time. It's great. It's, it's just, I don't know. It's like Applebee's I'm trying to think of other like good ones that are just like, oh, those are kind of nasty now that used to think they were great. Hmm. Applebee's Cheddar's is another one that I would I don't think I would ever go to Cheddar's. Anymore. <laughs> really? <laughs> I went there with my entire family probably like six months or so ago. It and? was nice. It was good? Uh, I don't remember. It's yeah. food, you know? Yeah. It's just like, yeah, eh, yeah. it's nice. You don't have strong opinions on it. Yeah. My grandma gave me a $20 bill. It was awesome. And you paid an exact change from that $20. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyway, what were you saying? I just had oh, to talk just, about the food Oh, just thing. my kids. My kids are just crazy. Yeah. They're just, they're just tough. I oh. loved the Patreon uh, video. <laughs> of the ice cream. I was cracking up out loud to myself watching it. It was so funny. And I, I don't, I don't, I listened back to it today and I don't think I even told the story. I, I just don't remember all the details of it because it was happening so fast. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just crazy. And I don't remember exactly that, but it was just, it was just madness. And somebody even... Cause I, I had posted on Patreon, like the before video of like, Hey, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in the drive through with my kids <laughs> and somebody on that video before the podcast came out about the whole story said, Oh, I'm really surprised that you're letting them eat ice cream like that in the truck. <laughs> that person is a prophet and you need ding, to, ding, ding. you need to do something like that for your work. Um, uh, just maybe a guidance counselor or something, but, um, yeah, overall it's been a good week. Uh, my parents were awesome and took the kids on Saturday. So Catherine, and I could just hang out. Ooh. And we were going to do like house projects and old people stuff. Like one of the things that Catherine's like, maybe we could organize the hall closet. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and she we... was, she was like serious about it. Like, that'd be good. That's something we could do. That's something I've never done. No, yeah. Right. <laughs> we have we, like our hall closet. It's called the sports closet. Right. So you store your sporting goods in Just there. Just anything in there. It's great. Yeah. I got like one of everything. So we were going to organize that. And I was like, why do I need to be here for this? <laughs> like she's going to ask my opinion and then I'm going to give it to her. And she's just going to be like, no, I think maybe the uh, homeopathic stuff should go over here and the sinus infection. I'm like, great. Why do I care? Awesome. But, and didn't end up doing any of that. Just hung out. But it was awesome. My parents were just so willing to just take our kids for a day. And it was like, we don't have to worry about them. So been watching Hard Knocks a lot lately. Mm. Um, it's on the Dallas Cowboys this year, which is always kind of interesting because Jerry Jones is like. I don't know. Jerry Jones is an enigma of the world. I don't know him super well. He's just, he's just like, I mean, he's the owner of the Cowboys, but he's also the GM of the Cowboys. That just, just tells you what kind of person he is. Like, yeah. it's like, I'm so good that I'm going to hire myself for this other job. You know, <laughs> I found the best guy for the job. And he's got all the financial like motivation behind everything, but also like is the guy running the ship anyway. Um, not, not a whole lot to say about that, except for just a reminder to myself that no matter if you're, a high school coach, a college coach, or an NFL coach. Coaches are just so ridiculous sometimes. Like uh the coaches just just talk in such a weird way and like a I don't even know how to describe it. Just like just they're just bad <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> like, like sometimes some of the things they say are like so disrespectful to people. And like I'm not saying that all coaches are like that. I know lots of great coaches out there, but we were talking about today doing jean shorts, you know, brainstorming stuff. And I'm just like, coaches, they're just they're just like there's certain qualities about like a lot of coaches that are very successful. It's like, how did you get so high up in this business by being like this? Um, it was kind of fun to share coach stories yeah, today. Cause we all had fun. similar ones. We all had plenty of coach stories and 
yeah, it's just fascinating that you could ever get to a point of like caring that much about like a middle school sport. Yes. As a coach, as like a crazy parent, just like, I just can't fathom it. I know. And, and I kind of was, was reflecting. I was like, I wonder if they cared as much as it seemed like they cared to me, or if I was a middle schooler and I was just nervous and scared of them a little <laughs> bit, you know? And so I viewed like that they were really into it when maybe they weren't as into it as I thought. But yeah, anyway, we had some good stories and we're going to have a good video on that hopefully. But yeah, um, shoot without me this week. I know. Good luck. Yeah. Maybe we'll have you, you know, film a few things in Maui for us. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to fill in. Coaches in Maui. <laughs> Coach Maui be like, <laughs> we always, this is something interesting about Trey that, and maybe, maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. Uh, he really likes knowing what the title exactly is going to be before we like brainstorm the whole video. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like that. that. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. I, that just, to me, that's just like that, that could come later to me. Like that's like the end of the road for me. And so it's always funny. He's like, so what's the title? What's the title of this? And I'm like, I don't know. Coaches. <laughs> it's about coaches. Yeah. <laughs> coaches be like, be like just works for everything with that stuff. So, um, anyway. Yeah. yeah. When juggling Jay and I were doing mm -hmm. our thing, we got into that rhythm of like having the title and thumbnail in mind before you turn the camera on. Okay. Like that is, if you're really trying to tube it properly, yeah. that's probably how you should do it. That's the thing. Like any, anytime I have any doubts or anything, I am very, uh, slow to voice them because i'm like jake and trey have done this for a long time and they know what they're doing <laughs> long so, time. so why do i why do i need to say anything but um yeah man nothing too crazy going on in my life awana's back so that's fun you remember awana mm -hmm. yeah you remember awana it's that movie with uh, the rock in there in hawaii no i'm just kidding <laughs> um <laughs> So yeah, I was like Juana, Juana, dude, Juanji. On Saturday when my parents were gone, I was like, we should go to a movie. That'd be really fun. Yeah, dude. There's no movies that I want to watch. What about the Conjuring? The Devil made me do it. Exactly, dude. <laughs> there's so many horror movies out there right now. Which it's, is, we're it's, in a pandemic. That's what sells. I know. <laughs> it's really like disturbing. Like so many of the things were horror movies, and then I think there was one comedy, eh, maybe two. There's the Jungle Cruise. Have you heard about this? No. It's a Disney movie with The Rock and Emily Blunt. Okay. That's, and I was like, that one looks kind of good. And then all of a sudden, all these weird creatures came out. And I was like, never mind. I don't want to watch that. But there's just nothing, nothing that I wanted. Like, literally, I was like, I'm like trying to force myself to find a movie to watch. And there's nothing out there. I'm sorry, man. It's sad, dude. I, I want to go and have that experience in the movie theater. And I just can't do it. So. I know what I'm going to get you for your birthday. A movie theater. Something. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe something unrelated that I just thought of just now. You never know. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Chris, $20 bill to Cheddar's. Could be. Gift card, maybe. Okay. Well, yeah. How is, how's, what's everything going on in your life? What's everything going on? Um, everything. Dude, uh, a lot. I got so much to talk about this week. I feel like a lot has happened. I feel like I, uh, yeah, I'm leaving from Maui. It's 8.15 p.m. right now. I leave from Maui at 5.45 a.m. tomorrow. Your flight leaves at 5.45. My flight leaves at yeah. 5.45. <laughs> uh, Scott Sell. So no generously way. is taking us to the airport. MVP at 4:15 a.m. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you serious, Isaac? Let me see if I can find the text. Isaac texted him today. We, Isaac and I've been so like we've just been procrastinating like crazy and so behind on stuff. <laughs> Isaac texted him and said, uh, "Um, Scott, you enjoy getting up at 4:30 a.m. <laughs> to take your friends to the airport, right?" <laughs> because, you text him today. <laughs> yeah, because we can make that happen for you tomorrow. <laughs> And then Scott just texted back, full service, locked and loaded. He was just in. It's like, full what? Full service. He loves that. It's <laughs> like his <laughs> brand. Full service, baby. Oh, that's amazing. And then Isaac's thinking like, Scott will, will have to wake up at 4.30. And I'm like, well, why don't we, we should probably get to the airport a little earlier. Right. We're checking bags. We're going to Hawaii. Hawaii just the only case. time the airport's ever busy here is early in the morning. It's crazy. Like you always think like, oh, there's none to be nobody here. Maybe it's because it's understaffed, I guess. I don't know. But I don't it, know. Like long lines when I've gone really early. In the yeah. Morning. And I think Isaac was like, let's just show up like right before and just check our, we'll just check our bags ourselves or something. Why don't we get there a little earlier? Oh but anyway, gosh. so there's been a lot happening with all that, trying to get prepped for it. I think I was telling you off the pot earlier. This is the most unprepared I've ever been for a vacation in my life, but. Oh, really? No, I, I didn't hear that. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I got a three and a half hour layover tomorrow. So I'll yeah. figure out sure. things in Maui then. Oh yeah. And you've been. So I'll I know I can you. rely on you. Yeah. 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 So I, I have nothing prepped other than a rental car from Esteban. But yeah, the only thing you really need to make sure you do is road to Hana. Everything else is like Hawaii. It's Hawaii. Is awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just drive around anywhere. You'll find something. Okay, fun to cool. Do. Yeah, I'm excited. I um, there was a period in this past week where in a 14 hour span, mm -hmm. I saw I experienced three things I've never seen before okay. in a row. You ready for this? Yeah, I like they this. get better and better as it goes. OK, first one about, you know, midnight 
uh, or so, whatever. Just late at night, I'm taking a shower, power goes out. During the shower. Dur- during shower. You ever had that happen? No, but I feel like that's like, growing up, did your parents say like, hey, it's, it's was it thunderstorming? Yeah. Did your parents used to say like, hey, it's thunderstorming, Do don't. not. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, my mom was also Is like. Is that a myth? I don't know. She, my mom wouldn't let me stay next to the windows during a thunderstorm. Oh, <laughs> just in case those windows get you. And I remember being kind of young, or like maybe in like, you know, elementary, middle school or something. And okay. I was like, how come? And then she was like, I don't know, actually. My mom just always told me not to. <laughs> And I was like, I guess those, it could, are, those metal windows, it could like, just come in and strike me in the living room, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah, the first time it happened, like the lights flickered and I jumped out of the water because I thought I was going to yeah, get electrocuted. Sure, sure. And then it came back on and I was fine. I was like, well, I guess that was the test. I, I made it through this. And then it went off again while you were and in it there. went off again. And this was early on in the shower. I had not scrubbed yet. Oh, so, so you, you still scrub? It put me to the test. Like, yeah. how well do I know the shower? Oh, do I know uh, my soap? Yeah, right. Do I know my body? Yeah. I, Turns out. Decently well. 10 out of 10. (laughs) Um, Whoa. (laughs) That reminds me of camp. Like, did you shower after all the kids would go to bed? Yeah, with the um, the headlamp. Headlamp Ah, on. Yeah, you showered the headlamp. And it was so peaceful. It was so great. I forgot about that. I didn't even like cross my mind that I'd done that before. Yeah. I forgot. Often, I don't know how yours were set up, but we had three (laughs) shower heads and there were like these, uh, you know, curtains in between. Yes. Now put back both the curtains. And all shower heads, I would, I would go for the trifecta. All shower heads were on I never thought about that. And I just had that red light of the, because you could turn on either like red or like yellow. Bright, wa- yeah, yeah. Or white, yeah. I didn't so. go in the middle shower because that was the one that Jack Waffle stomped in. So, you know, I, I couldn't go the trifecta shower heads. He didn't wipe. He didn't make you wipe. He just Waffle stomped it in there. <laughs> anyway, so okay. I got to shower in pitch darkness for a while. That was kind of fun. And then... Maybe, should we start doing it? Like Maybe. Because here's, here's my thing with showers is... They somehow simultaneously in my mind, like mentally, they wake me up in the morning, but they also like call me down at night. So one of those things is wrong. Uh, you're like a CBD salesman. Maybe so. Yeah. <laughs> Do you need this to be more alert? For everything. <laughs> yeah. Like, trust me. It'll help you fall asleep unless you need to study and it'll Seriously, make you more though, alert. Does yeah. that not make sense to you? At all? Like, do you ever like take a shower late at night and like, you're just, oh, I feel ready for bed. Is that like, you know what I mean? I'm probably not the best person to ask because I am ready for bed whenever. Sure. You know, if you give okay. me a horizontal, it's bedtime. Okay. But no, I typically take a shower to wake up. Yeah. To be honest. So. Yeah. And so, yeah, I just feel like both those things are true. And I don't think, <laughs> but maybe if I'm showering in the dark, it would help even better. <laughs> <laughs> really get you ready for yeah, bed. It seems so. like one of those like cryogenic tanks. Mm-hmm. Exactly like that. It's exactly like it's that. Exact, I'm pretty sure it's the exact same thing. <laughs> That's all a cryogenic thing is. I think it's just a darkness chamber, really. Yeah. yeah. It's not, there's nothing in there. Just, yeah, just darkness. Anyway, so that happens late at night. The next morning. Oh, sorry. We should, you know how we're going to do Jake and Brad try someday? Yeah. We need to do Jake and Brad try cryogenics. Jake and Brad cry. <laughs> Jake and Brad cry. <laughs> Ogenic. Yeah. That'd be fun. I'm down to do a lot of that stuff. Have you ever seen that thing where they, like, they just, there's a name for it, but they just freeze you? Like you're standing in that thing. And is that just, not what that is? Oh, I was thinking of the thing where you're like, uh, submerged in like water. I want to do that instead. Yeah. What is that thing? That's what uh, I'm thinking. Of. I don't know. Connor Lamb did it though. So Connor, if you still listen, let us know. There's he a few things it. that we don't know the name of, but yeah. there's one where you're standing upright and you're frozen. And I'm like, how is this safe? Like, how is this helpful? That's the thing that, it, uh, yeah. Antonio Brown, like, oh, yeah, like he, he like, <laughs> they burned himself or like whatever. Did That's some right. Messed up stuff with his foot. So I think you can, if you're in there too long, really mess yourself up. Okay. So it's not that safe. And then there's the other thing that I've heard like professional athletes also do yeah, you become like weightless yeah like a zero gravity ta- yes. water chamber that's what i want to do yeah i want to like lucid dream in there or something. yes dude that's what i had okay okay let's do that sweet jake and brad cry but we do it in the same room <laughs> that's the same that's, chamber that's my that's non-negotiable for me like there's one slot in the chamber for us to reach out our arms and we hold hands <laughs> as we slowly drift away into the upside down yep that's what we're gonna do uh so okay next first morning i go get coffee uh, downtown Kansas City, and I'm driving out to Oklahoma City for a wedding. So driving out of downtown, not in necessarily like a rough area. There's actually I'm by Crown Center. Okay, so not too bad. Could be worse for downtown. Yeah, there's a, kind of a little park area. I'm driving up on the side on the street and on the sidewalk to my right. As I'm approaching this man, I think that is a that is a bare bottom. That uh, is an exposed hiney. No, and I I can't take my eyes off of it. Yeah, obviously, of course. As I get closer. Cracks in the sidewalk. This is a man. Yeah. Taxpayer dollars. <laughs> Come on. Cracks. In, this man is bending over. Okay. Diarying. No, 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 no. Out no. of his butt. In like at 9.30 a.m. No. Oh. 9.30 a.m. Broad daylight. And I saw it. Oh. Peeing out of his butt on the sidewalk. Oh, gosh. That is. I don't even know what to say to that. 
Did you keep looking at that point or did you look away? I kind of looked away. Be honest. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of like, ooh. Okay, right. okay. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen I know, what I need to see. I know, what, I know how it works. I don't need to confirm that. But this is the part that <laughs> it's kind of funny. So, it you know, seeing that just got me in some kind of mood. Yeah. So I went to Subway. I went straight from there to Subway and I'm coffee in, the, in your foot log. Yeah, I go to Subway to, I don't want to stop on this road trip. So I'm like, I'll get a big old foot long now mm -hmm. and I'll be good. You fat daddy. Yeah. Something about the crack on the sidewalk just got me in the mood. <laughs> so I'm in the Subway drive through the one by my old house. I'm like, Oh, I know that there's a Subway drive through on house. house. Okay. By that, like, yeah, whatever, like Midtown area. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And while I'm in the drive through ordering, they have like a dumpster out back. And while I'm ordering, a man who I'm just going to go ahead and just safely assume who was also homeless, a man pops out of the dumpster holding like an unopened Cheetos bag and an unopened Sprite, just like he's getting his breakfast <laughs> and just walks away. Really? And I was like, whoa. Huh. What do you do at that point? I think he's got the system down. I think he must know. He knows the timing of when, when they Subway throw throws out. away like their expired stuff. Maybe. And he went in there and just got him a Cheetos and a Sprite unopened. This was kind of in the morning or is this what time? Yeah, morning. Yeah, maybe like right the first thing Subway does is like, hey, all our expired stuff, we throw it out, you know, right when we get there. Because Subway probably doesn't open till, I don't know what time. I don't know. 10, 30, 11. They get there at nine o'clock to start baking the bread or whatever. <laughs> they throw everything out. This guy knows. It what? was spectacular. I mean, those two things happened within three minutes of each other. So I was like, this is what a great Saturday. This is an amazing <laughs> start to my Saturday. He just popped out. He's like a little like gremlin or something. <laughs> This pops up with a Sprite. Yeah, you miss those urban times, you know, all those th all those stories. <laughs> I'm in the suburbs tell. now. Yeah, this doesn't happen anymore. Right. Oh, man, dude. Yeah, there's a, there's a homeless guy that frequents the Panera that I go to. And he, he's he got, like, like, I feel bad for him for multiple reasons, obviously. But, like, actually, I don't even know if he's homeless. He's just very messed up. Like, something about him, he's, like, very, like, he just talks to himself, whatever mm -hmm. that is. I don't know, yeah. schizophrenia or something. But it's crazy and it's very intimidating. And I always think, like, what if this guy just punches me someday? <laughs> like, what would I do? Because I would feel bad for this guy, but I'd have, also have to defend myself. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I think about that every single time I walk past this guy who seems very, like, he's got multiple personalities, he's like, talking to himself, having a conversation with himself. I'm like, what if he just, what if he just gets mad at me for butting into his conversation? <laughs> I don't know. I think about it. And I'm like, what if I have my green tea in my hand, you know? And he pops the green tea out of my hand. I, yeah. I'll be frustrated about that. <laughs> like, I just don't want to do about that it. I would hold up in court, I think, if I you think explain so. the green tea issue. I was, yeah, I was defending myself in my green tea. <laughs> so, well, I hope that never happens to you. I don't think it will. I, I try to kind of avoid, avoid it as much as I can. But anyway, when I think about getting into a fight, I think about how it can't like punching with my off hand just feels so unnatural. I, I like I always yeah. think about like I hope it never comes to that. I don't think it would hurt very bad if I punch him with my left hand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably I hope true. I can knock him out in one, is what I'm saying. I can't believe here's a spoiler from the Patreon. Uh your dad had been in how many did he say a hundred? <laughs> He's like maybe a hundred. A hundred fist fights. Yeah. I don't neither of us have been in anything close to one. Not yet. And I can't imagine, yeah, like how it would feel. I don't, I don't want to ever know, honestly. Like I just don't want to ever know what it feels like to punch somebody. Oh, I would love to know. Really? Yeah. To win a fight? Really? There's something inside of me as a man that wants that. Okay, but what if then you lose the fight? It would not feel as good as a man right. to lose the fight, but... If you lose the fight, then would you have to, like, kind of seek vengeance on somebody else? Now I gotta just pick like, a fight, yeah. Just like in your life, Rolodex, you, you can't be a loser on the record, so you have to have at least I got two it, wins. Two and one, one. Yeah, yeah, I need to start going to more Panera. Right. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Would you, would you kind of instigate at that point? Like, okay. Kind of bump, like, my green whoa, tea into oh, him. Whoa, hey. whoa! You sloshing my tea, buddy? Huh? <laughs> You, you try to throw teas, throw just, hands, just walk into very like diverse areas and just say things that almost sound like racial slurs. Mm -hmm. There's like, a, yeah. And just see what happens. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Like I said, earlier, hang banners. Earlier you said no ogre and I said no ger. <laughs> and I was worried about it. So I'll point it out now just to let you guys know. That I was what not, I was saying was not no ogre. Okay. So don't listen to this podcast too loud <laughs> or too fast of speed. Yes. It could sound worse. Okay, just letting you guys know that's what that was. Dude, that I, I like I like combining two words together a lot. That's what I was doing. Yeah, there. that's what I you promise. Did. And it was it was completely innocent. <laughs> I didn't catch that. Yeah, I did immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, just call, say some mother fat thing, okay, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But um, that reminds me of something. But I don't think we need to keep talking about things that are almost racial slurs. Third thing that you did. Third thing that you saw. What was it? Oh, that was the third thing. It went. Oh, right. No, two different, no power two shower, okay, okay, diarrhea, okay. Hot, 
Dumpster jump. <laughs> dump jump. Dump jump. <laughs> dump jump with the Sprite and Cheetos. Okay, well, tell me about the wedding. I want to hear all about it. Was it awesome? It was a great wedding. Uh, it was really fun. This was Grant's wedding. Grant Hudeberg. Remind us who Grant is. For anybody Grant, you know, put a, put a watch on this girl yeah. like a year ago at a wedding. Yeah. And uh, said, I'll come pick it up in Tennessee. And he did. And now he's bagged his dough. And uh, yeah, he's the man. It was great to see him. Great to see him uh, marry the love of his life. And really fun wedding they had. I didn't know this. I was sitting on the bottom floor of the church. But when they said it for the first time, it was a couple of Mr. and Mrs. Hudeberg. There were confetti cannons from the balconies. Very alarming for a split second, but so sick. Oh, like just so much confetti falling down as this music is playing as they're walking out. It was awesome. I, you had mentioned confetti cannons on the Patreon, but I thought you meant like as they enter in the reception. You're talking about from in the, the wedding. church in the church. That's crazy. It was sweet. Yeah, that sounds awesome. And that actually reminds me. Did it freak you out a little bit when you first heard it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, for the first time I'm, in my head, I'm thinking, what song are they going to go with? What song are they going to go with? <laughs> this and will then, be. You just hear that. I'm like, oh, holy cow. <laughs> That's uh, really cool. Though. But they actually didn't do I liked uh, Grant's wife, lovely woman, and I think listens to the pod still. Yeah. So when you're back from our honeymoon, hey, congrats. Gatlinburg. Gatlinburg. <laughs> they go to G Bird. They wish. Okay. I thought there was a chance we'd end up in Maui at the same time, yeah. but they're going some other, you know, cool island. Yeah. But they, I like the way they did their wedding. Like they didn't do, they had 17 groomsmen and like 12 bridesmaids, okay. which is awesome. They just have a ton of friends. Like why not? I do respect though, like, hey, these are my friends. This is how many friends. Yeah, I who have. cares? Because I, I, well, no, I had, I had the right guys, but like, I think I had a number of guys that Catherine wanted those many girls for. And I, I think if Grant had five more friends that he really wanted to put in there, that's awesome. Yeah, for him. I liked it. Just yeah. a little more free flowing. Right. 17 is amazingly It huge. looked awesome in a pretty small church. But when we got to the reception, there was no like introductions of them. There was no assigned seats, but it wasn't like unorganized. It was just like this huge ballroom. Okay. And everyone just got to socialize. It, there was just a buffet line, just go whenever you want. And that was so nice. It was yeah. just like, yeah, I'm here to like, I talked to so many people. It was so fun getting to catch up. Uh, there's uh, several things. I like that. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, I just as, as adults, I don't think we need to be told like when we can go eat. Yeah, exactly. Like, like I guess maybe like specifically if you need like the bride and groom to eat, like get them their plate first mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. But beyond that, like we're adults, we can be patient. We can sit at our table if we want to. We can go up there if we want to. Yeah. Like I was enjoying conversation and kind of monitoring the line. I'm yeah. Like, oh, it's busy right now. I'll keep talking to this guy. This yeah. is great. Oh, it's dying down. Hey, you want to go get in line? Yeah. Right. It's awesome. Yeah, I love it. So many parts of the wedding were great. Okay. It's really fun. Uh, I had a guy come up to me on the dance floor and uh, he's like, he goes, Jake. I'm like, what's up, dude? And I'm wearing these like glasses that also light up <laughs> sunglasses that light up in an already dark space. I'm blind. You yeah. Know, I yeah. Can't see a thing. I'm just like, what's up, dude? I just dap him up. I have no idea who he is. What's up, <laughs> so, dude? Good to see you. And then I realized I should probably take my glass off. See what it is. I'm like, oh, crap. I don't recognize this guy. He goes, dude, I'm like, I'm, I'm a subscriber. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm a subscriber <laughs> and i was like oh right on he's like i was like to what he's like the like the the three of you guys it's all, all three of you the trio and i was like oh you train the fat guy well <laughs> uh, we call him tubbo but almost yeah well in my head because ty gatewood was also there and oh, i've been yeah. talking about i was just thinking like and this guy's from oklahoma ty's from oklahoma whatever i was just like oh yeah i only bought a limo like that's so cool that you watch like ty's actually here i don't do you know ty <laughs> that's funny that that's your assumption like well he said the three of you i was yeah. like that was just like that, that was, was a trio thing, yeah and anyway he's just like no um i subscribe to uh oh my gosh um i like i watch every video it, um and I bet you, I, I go, jean shorts? Jean shorts, yes. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of jean shorts. <laughs> That's awesome. And I was he like, was thank you, man. Yeah, he couldn't couldn't take it, I guess. That's awesome. No, but it was really nice. So Reese. Reese. Shout out Reese. Oh, Reese. Uh, yeah, I know Reese. Oh, actually? It's his cousin, right? He's a subscriber. Grant's cousin? I don't know. Oklahoma City. Yeah, I know Reese. He was a he was a K-Country kid back in the day. No way. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's a cool kid. Oh, he's probably, whatever, 20 years old now, but. Yeah, I think he's a senior in high school, he said. Okay, yeah. That's awesome uh there were several people who like said they'd been watching jean shorts stuff which really? was cool yeah i uh yeah it was so fun oh this is kind of cool i wanted to share this is not funny but it's just i don't know i think it's cool people liked uh that one time when i feel, feel like people just like whenever we're like encouraging or just like normal dudes but people don't <laughs> see it as like normal dude stuff but real quick here's a text i got from ty gatewood this morning he uh well let me preface it with some context he uh ever since the limo trip he started this business and it's like booming he has an entire warehouse that he owns the which book, is, book business yeah he does yeah. like used books 
and it was fun. I've never really been in just like an old fashioned warehouse. I loved it, though. Dude, yeah. It's like a freight elevator. Everything's made out of concrete or brick. Like, it's I, so don't, old. I don't have a true reason to have one. I mean, obviously, like my business lends itself better than most. I, I want one. But I want one so bad. Yeah, I couldn't stop saying that. I was like, this oh, is so yeah. cool. Like, I want to have a reason to be in a warehouse. Yes, dude. It was so sweet. Absolutely. He has a neighbor uh, next to him whose name, <laughs> his name is Michael Jackson. Okay. He's like clinically insane. They're pretty sure. Okay. The government, he used to have a scuba business there. So it's a, <laughs> it's a storefront. You know, nothing like Oklahoma scuba. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure it was booming. <laughs> and I guess the, the city was like, hey, we want to put a billboard on your property. We'll pay you to. And he's like, great. And so now he just takes the money from the city, closed down a scuba shop, lives in the scuba shop, and in his free time, calls the cops on the book business about once a week. Oh, he like Ty's business. He hates Ty. Why? Because like, well, no, I mean, he's, he's yeah, he's just it he's, just doesn't make any sense. OK, it's he's not done. like rational. Yeah. Um, so this guy makes enough money off this billboard to I live? guess to not work anymore. He closed down scuba shop. <laughs> wow. Um, but anyway, Ty texted me this morning, 645 a.m. I'm really glad I got to spend time with you this weekend. I really enjoy seeing you live life on your own terms, and I'm reflecting on how that has impacted me. There wouldn't be a book business without the limo trip, and there certainly wouldn't have been a limo trip without Jake Triplett. You're an all-time friend, and I hope one day we can collaborate on more stuff. In the meantime, I will be subscribing to Gene Schwartz Comedy and seeing you guys when you come to Oklahoma City on tour. Dude, he's the man. Isn't that so great? He's so nice. I got to spend 80 days straight with that guy. Yeah. Just so just loving and encouraging and yeah. just the man. So like The first time I ever met Ty, I remember, I don't know what we were doing, but I just remember like falling asleep late at night at your house. We went to like Hy-Vee across the street and got a huge thing of ice cream and like <laughs> all just like shared ice cream out of this big carton. And then we fell asleep on the couch. Like, this is kind of weird, but like he was kind of like laying on me a little bit. Yeah, like Hattie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was a great feeling. And then I woke up and it was like four o'clock in the morning. I was like, I need to go back to my house. because I live next door to you. <laughs> and he woke up and I was like, dude, I got to go. And he's like, all right, man. And we like hugged. Like we, <laughs> we met like, like eight hours before that we hugged and I left, but it was like the like most like, like, Hey man, like I care about you. Huh? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's just a nice, like caring dude. So yeah, that's awesome. Good times at the weddings. Got to see so many old friends. A lot of people asking about you. There's yeah. so many K country people there. Really? Um, yeah. Jack Warren's sister. Okay. Was asking about you. She's like, I think really? my brother is like really good friends with Brad yeah. or whatever. <laughs> I was or gonna say, I'm be. not really friends with Blair, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Jack Warren, one of my groomsmen. There you go. Yeah. Made the cut. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So it was awesome. Good times, in Oklahoma City. You ever do like a re? Well, I guess you don't because you haven't had a wedding yet. But like a redraft. I think about that. Like, <laughs> you know how they do like redrafts. Like if you know if we redid the, if the 2003 <laughs> draft for the NBA was today. You know, like who would you have drafted first or whatever? I think about that with my groomsmen. Like if the Hanson Ellis wedding was today, yeah, like Jake would be in my wedding this time. You know, whereas before, obviously not. But not really. Um, I saw on Patreon you had posted that thing about the wedding, like kind of reflections, and was like, I think you asked like, what would you do differently or maybe something like that if you like could do your wedding over what would you do or if you haven't had a wedding what would you do okay yeah so i wrote down a few things about this okay um so first thing is just make sure the food is good doesn't matter don't don't pay that much for good food just make sure it's good make sure it is good so like the thing that everyone remembers about my wedding is that we had honey butter chicken biscuits from whataburger and they were like you know two dollars a piece or God, something it's fire and so many people pay for these really nice catering companies to come in and the chicken's dry and mm -hmm. the salad doesn't get eaten and blah, 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 Just blah. Just make sure you have good mashed potatoes. Seriously. Everyone loves good mashed potatoes. Yeah. Like who wouldn't want that? Yeah. And so, and like, and so somebody recommended to us when we were planning everything, like what are some foods that are important or like special to you? So we had HBCVs, we had Dr. Pepper, you know, whatever. Like, Gosh, that's good. It was just great. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> this is great. Like, um, that's first thing. I wish we had a live band. I know you said there was a live band that, and, but kind of live band, kind right? Of live band. <laughs> the guy yeah. lip sunk. Kinda. Yeah. Lip sunk. Yeah. Past it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was like getting frustrated at the like lead female singer too, like visibly on stage. Yeah. It was like, all right, I'm just going to turn around and pretend to just not watch them and just dance really on my own. Yeah. I, I had not been to a live band wedding until like starting to go with Catherine. Cause like in Texas, they're a lot more popular Yeah, because they're expensive Yeah, <laughs> and they're amazing. It's electric. It is like, Songs that I would never want to dance to normally. They can make them dancing. Yes, yeah, it doesn't dude. matter. Oh, it's so fun. Yeah. And I've had the thought of like, it'd be pretty fun to be in a wedding band. And I think to myself, that'd actually be a grind. It'd be a huge grind. I think it'd be fun though. Yeah. You have the talent. I don't know. That'd be fun. It'd just be a party every single time you're up there. You don't even have to make your own stuff. Just cover other people's music. Exactly. Yeah. Just sing it well. No, you shouldn't make your own stuff at that <laughs> yeah. point. Yeah. Um, Real so quick on dancing. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, Grant is just such a fun guy. He has so many fun friends. 
I spent most of the time on the dance floor just simply observing. <laughs> it was crazy some of the things I saw. Like, not like in an appropriate way. Did but Ty just like, do anything crazy? Oh my gosh, this dude. <laughs> he, I mean, The one <laughs> wedding I've been to with Ty real quick was Zach Warehead's wedding. And I probably left, like, we had to drive back from Wichita. So it was like a three-hour drive. So I probably left 30 minutes into the dance party. And Ty had already, like, taken off his shirt and, like, tied his tie around his head. Like, take it off his shirt completely. Like, not, like, yeah, unbutton like it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So, go ahead. Oh, he's always up to something. I mean, one time at Preston Ramsey's wedding, Kate West guy of ours, I think I've told this story on the podcast, Ty was like, I'm going to go do the wet guy challenge. That's right. Like, what is that? Which wasn't Preston Ramsey's wedding, like, super nice. Oh, yeah. 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 He's from, like, the, yeah, Coppell, Texas. Right. You know, so... um Anyway, tonight, I mean, yeah, you called it instantly on the dance floor. I haven't even, as soon as I get to the dance floor, Ty already has, so one of the dance floor props was like those foam, like cylinders that are like white, but they light up. They like make like red, blue, oh, and green, yeah, yeah, like yeah. light up those. things. They're really fun. Yeah. Spirit sticks. Spirit sticks. Yeah. Ty had like <laughs> five of those stuck down the back of his shirt and he was like walking around like a hunchback like this. <laughs> and then probably five minutes later, I look back and he's trying to see how many he could cram in his mouth. <laughs> and he's got like five spirit sticks out of his mouth. What? And he's just going around like, like essentially kissing people with the spirit <laughs> sticks on the dance floor. So yeah, he was electric. There's the other guy where I was like, this dude, I can't take my eyes off of him. Like the moves he's doing, like I think he's good at dancing. But right. it's also like he's having some sort of like, yeah, schizophrenic attack yeah. or something. And he's he's fighting. He's he hangs out at the Panera parking lot sometimes <laughs> yeah. too. It was something to see well it ended up just inter- well we danced together okay and we became friends that way and then he introduced himself to me he's like hey by the way you're jake right and i was like oh and then i feel bad because i don't know him right he's like grant's told me like a ton about you and it's told me like we would make like we need to be like making some content together or whatever i was like oh that's really nice and in my head i'm thinking like grant has never talked to me about <laughs> you so that's a bummer but but you seem amazing you know i didn't yeah, say yeah, any yeah. of that but i get i'm talking to him. i was like what do you do where do you live and he said he works for the atlanta hawks in uh wait he works at k country do you know this guy phil dang it that was gonna be cool um but he said he works for the atlanta hawks and guest services and i was like what does that mean exactly he's like usually when we have like special guests i make sure they have a good time okay also part of my job is they always put me on the dance cam every game i'm like that makes sense (laughs) that's awesome i I could tell there was something about the way you're moving where i was like it's just it's something else it's something out of this world I will post some videos on patreon this week because i had to take some dude i like that job oh my gosh it was awesome yeah you get to like basically like wine and dine, like the most fun people. And then like 15 minutes of every night, you'd be like, I got to go guys real quick. And then just go dance your heart out. Yeah, <laughs> That's amazing. I was like, this is unreal. And it totally <laughs> makes sense. And one of the guys that I competed against in the, that game show next trick shot superstar, his, I can't really tell. I think one of his part-time jobs is he's like an entertainer at Atlanta Hawks games. He comes out and does like one-on-ones against fans, like during timeouts and stuff okay. like that. So it's like, do you know Mosquito? He's like, I love Mosquito. Mosquito. It's like, cool. You're the only two people I know who work in the NBA industry and there you're you in the same arena. So that's wow. cool. Anyway, Phil. Phil. I, I, don't know, I don't know Phil from K Country. He must have been past my time. Yeah. He said he worked there for four summers, but it must have been after you. Wow. That's amazing. Anyway, keep okay. going. Sorry. No, that's great. Um, so yeah, good food, live band. I, we didn't get a videographer for our wedding, which I regret more flowers. I was also thinking to myself, where hands wedding that I was at where Ty put his tie around his head. You were doing video stuff. Are you glad to not really be like in that funnel of life anymore where people view you as like a wedding videographer? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause I bet back in the day, Grant, well, I don't know, maybe not Grant, but people like that you've gone to weddings to recently, like they might've asked you to be that wedding videographer and you're like, I'm glad I don't have to yeah, say yeah. no to them anymore. Yeah. It's nice. Um, it's nice. But yeah, we didn't have a videographer videography or like that, that, um, you know, budget item was just becoming a thing when we got married. Yeah. So it was like not as common, but yeah, I, I regret not having a little bit more footage of our wedding. Cause we also didn't have a very good photographer. <sighs> and so make sure you have a good photographer. Taylor Atkins had photo probably. No. Yeah. Taylor Atkins photo would have done amazing. Oh yeah. 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 Like that's the one you should get. We should have gotten them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then I just put, get the biggest venue possible. It doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> like my sisters, not even joking. This makes us sound whatever, poor, whatever. We're not poor, but they got married at the American Legion or not, not married, but the, the yeah, wedding reception. With <laughs> like the where the Legion. veterans play bingo. Yes. <laughs> and they just like, they just decorated it super, super nice and like beautiful and stuff, but it was so much cheaper. And so you can invite so many more people. That's what it's all about. It's just like the more people, the more fun it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So get the biggest venue possible, invite as many people as you can. And then this one's a little bit more serious, I guess, but marry the love of your life. Yeah. Don't go to bed angry, Jake. <laughs> um, I wish we did would have done corporate worship for ours, like just sung, sung worship songs together, but. Oh, I see. Like 
we didn't. We just, we like, just did like how deep the fathers loved for us. Like, while we like, I don't even know, prayed or something. That's stupid. Corporate worship sounds like you're just singing songs to like your CEO. <laughs> like TPS report. <reporting. laughs> Balance the spreadsheet. <laughs> you are beautiful, my sweet, sweet form. Form. <laughs> I'll be look up again. It's beautiful. Thanks. So those, that's all I had for you. That's nice. And then I also wrote down, I did, I did make another list real quick. Uh, top 10 w- uh, wedding dance songs. You want to hear them? Ooh. Uh, I bet I bet ours are different because I know that you don't like some of my songs. Okay, give it to me. All right. And this is this is ordered. This is a 10 to 1 okay. in particular order. Okay. Number 10, Call Me Maybe by Carly Rae Jepsen. <laughs> I love it. Let, let me preface. <laughs> I do like the violins. The violins in that song are dun, so dun, catchy. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, dude. Basically, all these songs are just jingle songs I've done in the past. Not that but, part. They're like in the chorus, like the <laughs> just that. Oh, I know what you're talking about. In the, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Dun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is good. I just think any of these songs, you got to make sure they, that people know them and you got to make them poppy. Call Me Maybe is pretty good. It's actually. a good song. That's a pretty good song. It's a really fun song. I'm thinking about Put it. Put it on. Yeah. And like almost everyone knows it and they will yell it at the top of their lungs. It's a good song. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Coming so, around on Call Me Maybe. All right. Number two, Turn Down For What? Number nine. Number nine. Sorry. Number nine. Great song. Turn Down For What? Fire me now. Another <laughs> round of shots. Oh, and then like the second time when it like breaks and it's like bump, 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 bump. Oh, it gets me going. <laughs> I actually listened to other way over here when I was making this list. Um, number eight, Lip Gloss by Little Mama. A little oh bit gosh. of an indie, indie pick there. But oh, I'd just... put that in my top three. Yeah. Really? That's one. That's a back pocketer. People have left the dance floor. Use Lip Gloss to get Bring it back. It back. Yep. Bring it back on. Um, number seven, maybe the best song on the list, but I don't know why I put it. Number seven <laughs> is uh, Cupid's po- popular Cupid Shuffle. Oh my gosh. Get it out of the <laughs> no here. No Cupid. No Get Cupid. it out of mm. this list. The 19 minute song where you do the same dance moves over and over it's again. It's wonderful. It gets it's, talk about pe- people back on the dance floor. No, you got to earn it. That's like a cheap, no. cheap way of getting them back nope. on the dance floor. I, I like I, American Legion, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we go there. Baby. Hey guys, get away from the bingo cards. We're going to do the Cupid Shuffle. That's, right? my, that's my one choreographed song on the list, but it's up there. <laughs> Number six is Flow Ride. I have I have three different songs for Flow Ride on my list. Low, um, obviously. No, number six is Good Feeling. Mm. Okay. Uh, I just love that song. I, yeah, I really, it's actually pretty yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. I'm it's th- really good. The verse is like, it's like, like yes. it got a good like 808 to it. Yeah, yes. I'm imagining it. All these songs I noticed have like a uh, quarter note bass, like yeah, driving yeah. thing. Four on the floor. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Thanks. Um, and then, then really all these next three are flow rider. Next one is going down for real. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going down for real. <laughs> That's a good one. It's a dude. Flow Rider makes bangers. You don't hear that song as much as the other ones. I know. And then number four would be low. Okay. Mm, like anytime you hear oh that oh my gosh it's go time it's like that low. that's when you chug the water i gotta get out and be like i'm going out kath <laughs> okay like Catherine's like you know catching up with her k-life girl over the corner it's like i got i gotta go back out <laughs> uh <laughs> number three macklemore's can't hold us that one just gets me that that one maybe i don't know it just gets going yeah number two take me back to seventh grade school dances get low by little john Eastside boys <sighs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. And the number one undisputed champion, the Michael Jordan of the top wedding songs. Yes. By Usher. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. You're saying yes instead of yeah. No, I'm saying yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm saying yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. <laughs> no. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah, that's a chance. No, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, something that was missing. Nothing. Uh, this was the perfect list. Dang. I just had it. The, yeah, the yes yeah confusion <laughs> sorry <laughs> i'll give you my honorable mention was um we found love oh rihanna love that song too that one that one gets going too how do, what parts it get going because like, like oh yeah 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 and it's like bum, 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 i remember bum, that time bum, bum, of like bum, bum. pop music like yes it, it was great like rihanna like right when she came out with that song i think is when justin bieber dropped that album that was like what do you mean and sorry and this is like the first time pop music had like edm like choruses yes. and i was like this That's is when awesome chain smokers were popping yes like i want yeah. more of this right yeah. yeah it was just like fun poppy music yeah like, yeah 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 it was great yeah it was a good time i definitely realized that most of my songs are from at least college five ten years ago yeah so, but it's fine. But that's okay. That's I mean, who I, I think, am. yeah, I'm not going to put on like what's popping by Jack Harlow at a wedding right now. <laughs> oh, babe, I got to go out there. No, no <laughs> one says that. <laughs> like, no one's like, okay, yeah. It's Maybe true. someday. Maybe I don't think so. But I'd probably not for that. So. <laughs> so, yeah, that's awesome. That's a good list. Thanks. Thanks for, man. Thanks for listing that. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, I got a few things to follow up from last week, Brad. What do you want? Do you want um, Facebook Marketplace? You want Tony? You want... Uh, We're going to save Tony. We're going to save him. <laughs> okay. Save okay. him for a little bit later. All right, let's do the, the Facebook Marketplace. So I left straight from here to go uh, meet up with, with Jack from Facebook Marketplace. Who you said was really cool. Seemed. Cool guy, Jack. Mm -hmm. Nice communicator. Uh, he's like, you know, I arranged the quick trip we were meeting at. Let's meet here. He says, great, I'll be at a white Toyota Highlander. I meet up there. I'm a few minutes late. He's been there for like 20 minutes. I'm like, trying to find him. I'm trying to find him. Doing one lap. I don't see anything on the perimeter of the quick trip. I'm like, is this guy a sociopath? Is did you Johnson Drive? Yeah, wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I thought, I was like, man, did he park in like a gas spot to meet up for? What a weirdo. <laughs> yes, dude. I got to the point. I Googled Toyota Highlander. I'm like, maybe I just don't know what a white Toyota. Oh, I'm like, it's just like a Prius. <laughs> yeah. No, and yeah. I was like, no, okay. That's what I was imagining. That's what I was looking for. And then I go back and look at the DM that I sent him and I went to the wrong address and I'm like, Hey oh, man, so, your fault. so yeah, I told him where to go and I went to the wrong one. Did you go? The, what did you send in the one by my house? Yes. Yeah. The one and, that, yeah. yeah. Yep. 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 I, Cause I, I do the opposite all the time. I send that address to people and then they always go to the other one. It's tricky. It's Two quick trips on the same parkway. Yeah. So I always send them like the link, which maybe that's what you did too. Like I send them like a link so to the Google maps. Yeah. Yeah. That we, and even then it screws up like <laughs> probably 25% of the time. But I was eight minutes away. It wasn't too bad. No. And um, I finally get there. It's a nice, easy exchange. People were not able to find the Venmo because I think when you Venmo a stranger, you know, someone you're not friends with, it's private. Okay. But um, the Venmo, and I will show you, I didn't, even though it was private, I still went for it. Right in front of him, <laughs> the, the message I went with, you know, I paid him $400 and the message was, wasn't a very quick trip for me. <laughs> He, he gave me nothing. He had no response to it whatsoever. Probably because he's like, yeah, dude, you made me wait for so <laughs> yeah, long. Been here 30 minutes. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I went with. I felt like it was like, you know, it was off the cuff. It made sure, sense with the sure. situation. And oh, man. I have so many, like, because today is Monday for us, mm -hmm. the week before you guys are listening to this, I've gotten so many friend requests on Venmo today. Everyone's looking for me it. Too. And I feel bad. Yeah. And, and I'm like, you're not going to find it. Private Jack. Kept maybe, it hidden. maybe send me a Venmo right now of like one cent and like say, here's what my caption was to Jack. And then people are like, ah, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So there's the follow up <laughs> there. Uh, I had an idea for the comedy tour, Brad, your businessman yourself. Okay. What do you yeah. think about this? So Trey was telling me like kind of, Hey, feel free to like, if you want to create your own merch, if you want to yes, sell your own yes, merch. Yes, 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 <laughs> I've been thinking about this for a long time. Like, I wish that he would like, yeah, let you, maybe not let you, but I wish you would do that stuff. I'm into it already. Okay, okay well, hold on, hold on. Because, <laughs> okay. yeah, you're going to want to take this bigger than I, I probably want to. But here's my idea. What do you think? So forget having all this merchandise. I got to pack. I got to ship, whatever. Unbox. Every show, I sell one t-shirt. <laughs> I sell yeah. one shirt to the highest bidder. Love it. And it's like a, something is specific about it each time. Like, so I have to make like 35 custom t-shirts or okay. whatever, 40 custom oh, t-shirts because like, it's going to have the city on it or mm -hmm. something about it. And okay, okay. there's only one. So like, I like this. thank you guys. Thank you, Charlotte. My name is Jake Triplett. I will be selling a t-shirt in the back. Yeah. Just one. No, it so has let to, me know. <laughs> you have to, you have to incorporate it into your set somehow. Probably. So you have to write like right now, before you leave, you have to write that joke for like specifically for each city. And then you have that punchline of that joke on there. It's it's a big task, but it can make you I can, thousands. I can make a $65 t-shirt, though, to the highest bidder. 65 aim higher, baby. You think higher? 100% I median do. Median will be higher than that? I think, judging off the people that bought our Ghost Runners merch, I think people are willing to spend money on you, dude. <laughs> if they and, know if it's a one-of-a-kind shirt? Yes. And then I can probably make just as much money, and I only have to sell one. I just have to have some weird yeah. like clipboard sign-up sheet next to me while I'm taking pictures of the people. Hey, don't yeah. forget, there's a silent auction happening to my right <laughs> for this t-shirt I made. And somebody just snatch it real quick. <laughs> oh, I like that, though, because it would encourage people to stick around. They would, they would think everyone would want to hang out with you. I like it. That's my idea. Um, One t-shirt guy. Okay. I really like the idea of lots of t-shirts and just having Big Daddy come with you and just sell them. Be I, would, I would sling those things. <laughs> I guarantee you, I, I would outsell Trey. Easily. Like selling it like ghost hunter stuff or Easily. just your own stuff? No, your stuff. I, no, <laughs> don't even they don't have no I am. I'll wear a mask. I would love you coming along just to sell t-shirts for me. Yes, you dude. have no other role on the trip. <laughs> like, like I'm like, hey Trey, I'm available just in case anybody like needs anything. Like I've been doing comedy shows. I got like second place the other night, you know, and the other guy steals his jokes off Twitter. But I mean, I can just sell t-shirts if that's all you want. I like the idea of him offering you the spot of opening. Like, I'd really rather focus my efforts on selling Jake's t-shirts. Yeah, that's I a just, bigger opportunity for me. I have a lot on my plate right now with the t-shirt thing. So uh, <laughs> Uh, 
And you know, like, yeah, Jake's paying me five cents per shirt that I'm slinging. So, <laughs> so you know, it can add up. I did the same thing with, you know, laughing would, taffy jokes. I would sling those things, dude. Oh. I would bargain with people. You wouldn't let people leave without at least like looking no. at the merchandise. I, no, I would be shameless about it. <laughs> you would be the best salesman. I would. <laughs> I would annoy people. Yeah. I would annoy you, honestly. You'd be like, Brad, stop. Brad, it's fine. You're like, what? I guess they didn't enjoy the show because they're just walking out without a Jake t-shirt. Yeah. I guess they didn't laugh at all. Huh? Oh my gosh. They don't want to support local art. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> I want to design some merch for you. <laughs> that's really fun. Thanks, dude. I, I didn't know if you would like the just one shirt idea, but... I do. I, I like the idea. It's just fun. Like, now that we've done merch for Ghost Runner, it's really cool to see, like, so many people have our stuff. So I like that idea, too, of just, like, giving everyone the opportunity. Maybe maybe both. But then that's you, you, don't wanna, you, said you don't want to carry all the inventory and stuff. But Well, I mean, maybe. It's not out of the question. Like, I sell my own T-shirts. There's just, like, one or two designs of a T-shirt, mm -hmm. but there is, like, the special shirt. Yeah. The MVP. The golden goose. I think so. The yeah. golden egg. The MVT. The NFT. I sell an NFT. Now we're talking. I give them a heart, oh, uh, flash drive. There we go. Maybe not a flash drive because I feel like those are already obsolete a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give them something like cutting edge on something like obsolete. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. I'll figure it out. Dude, that's awesome. Anyway. So. I'm excited for you for that. And I need to like probably make moves on this soon. Like the tour is going to be here before I know it. So yeah, I need to like figure out what I'm doing, order the stuff. Okay. Get it out there. Yada, yada, yada. Um, tell me what I, tell me if I did this right or wrong. You're a big drive through guy, right? Okay. Okay. Excited for this. I was just in the drive through getting Catherine some Raisin Cane's earlier. Okay. Raisin Cane's classic, like, Hey, 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 what are you thinking about chicken today? We got chicken. What are you sitting in? Stick. Cluck, cluck, cluck. I don't give a rip what you want. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, stuff like that. And I'm like, gosh. Um, so it was a long line. It's always such a long line at that Cane's by our house. Okay. And, um, I was there. There's a car in front of me, little little car, and then there's big big daddy's truck, and I I'm not even close. I'm let's say ten feet away from this thing. Okay, and I just hear from like, the car in front of you. From no, I'm really close to the car in front of me. Okay, okay, ten feet away from the uh, drive through people like that are like the the window thing. The speaker, not the window, nope. but the speaker. Okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, I got it. And so I just hear like very faintly, like I didn't even have my window down at this point. <laughs> and I'm like. Oh, are they oh, asking they're already, me? They're already, yeah. And then I hear, like, I don't, I don't say anything. And then I hear something else and I felt pressured to Ooh. yell my order. And so, yep. and so I was like, hi, can I please have a three finger combo? And they're like, did you say there's a box combo? And I'm like, no, 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 no. Three <laughs> finger, three finger with an unsweet tea. And they're like, okay, three finger combo with sweet tea. No, 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 sorry, no, 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 no. sorry. <laughs> Unsweet, like not sweet at all. <laughs> and I, I didn't know, like, like, like the people pleaser in me, like the, the, like whatever. I just felt bad for them for like saying that really awkward phrase anyway. Like, like they have to say that every time, which yeah. I guarantee they don't like. And just hearing silence. And so I was like, I feel bad for these people. So I got to I got to <laughs> say something back, even though I was so far away. I was easily from here to the weight bench. Which everyone knows how far you that guys is. know that yeah. helps. <laughs> we are so far away, like, like not even close. And I just didn't know what to do at that point. Has I that ever happened to you? I think I'm always fearful of it happening. Like I'm in an awkward spot. Don't try to take my order now. Right. But I've had to kind of yell like that before. I do the same thing. It's like, well, they seem ready. So hopefully exactly. they can hear. Yeah. I, 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 something about it. Like I want to help them as much as possible. Maybe they're just trying, like they're, they've got a huge line. They're trying to get my order as soon as possible yeah. to get me through. And so. Yeah, I was just screaming it. But I just like, I don't know if this is the right call or not. <laughs> I don't know if this is helping them or hurting them. Like, what if they get my order wrong and they have to remake it again? Oh, so that, that's great. I don't know. I, I just didn't know what the what the etiquette was there. So no, I think you did great. You're a drive through aficionado. And yeah, at a certain point, do you just like, OK, I kind of felt bad. I think they could hear me well as it was. I didn't need to yell. When you get to the window, you just scream that loud anyway <laughs> and make it seem like you have like that's your voice thing. modulation right. issues. <laughs> Hello, lovely day we're having, huh? Debit or credit? Credit! <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. You want any ketchup today? No ketchup. I got it at home. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. I just, it was just uncomfortable all around for me. That's great. I also thought about it and then they, they got me off guard with like talking to me 10 feet away from me. I thought about making a Patreon video where I responded to everything they said with a rhyme myself. Like, hey, hey, hey think about chicken today. And I was going to say like, Three box combo. I don't know. I had a th I had a thing in my mind. I didn't. Probably not with combo, but with a different. No, it was rhyme. with combo. It oh, was, 
Oh yeah, three three box or three finger combo. That would be the bombo. <laughs> that was all I was gonna do. And then what to drink? Unsweet tea for you Wait, can make it for you, me. Did you say bombo? Bombo. Why not say like that would be the bomb though? Like use like real words instead of going bombo. <laughs> I think the patrons would love Bombo. <laughs> knowing knowing what I know about the Patreon membership, they're big Bombos people. They would love. That would be the bomb though. That would be the Bombos. <laughs> oh, that's Weird. funny. Isaac just asked us if we want anything from Sonic, do we? Mm, yep. I think I want to... I don't know. Nah. I don't know. Yeah, do I want a milkshake? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no thank you for me. You say whatever you want. But that was nice of him to offer. Man, that's crazy. This time tomorrow, Isaac and I are going to be like on the beach, which is weird. I do not feel like I'm about to be on the beach. You just <laughs> Brad's text just came across my computer, all caps. No, thank you. <laughs> that's the most deep joke I could think of right there. <laughs> that got me good. Texting Isaac, all caps, about uh, a joke like, we just made on the podcast. Okay, he has no idea. I don't get it. Yeah, you're really going to go through a lot in the next 24 hours with Isaac. Yeah. Yeah. We're about to like hope and pray that whatever we've done to, oh, I still got to tell you this whole story about COVID testing. That's been a nightmare, but I think I want to tell you a more fun story. And if we run out of time for the like lame COVID story, then, oh, well. Just Jake. Oh, yeah. I could tell in there. Yeah. But, um, but just Jake's not lame. It's just like, you know, <laughs> you know, run up, spill off. Yes. Run up, what? Run yeah. off, spill over. I knew it didn't sound right. Okay. Pour anyway. over. Oh, yes. Yeah. Special pour, pour. over sentence. Uh huh. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> special. Yeah, remember that <laughs> earlier? Well, whatever. We can't special we, blend. We, yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. we can talk about it. But okay. Um, two days ago, on my drive to Oklahoma City, I called an old friend of mine. I'm sure at some point in the podcast, I've mentioned my friend Ali Shields. I met her in 2011 at American Idol. We both made it to like the top 50 in San Diego, and I I became friends with this girl. And just right away, I was like, "This is like one of the most like likable, like charismatic girls I've ever seen." Just like just so like drawn to her like personality. Like, you meet her in line or what? Sorry. Uh, it's a pretty, I mean, there's only 50 of us. So it was like a pretty oh, small you met her room. Once you funneled. Down. Oh yeah. Sorry. Okay. Not until we like got to the story judges round. Okay, cool. Come to find out. She's like crazy talented. She makes it all the way to Hollywood for American Idol. Like does all this stuff. Super, you know, great, whatever. Then to come to find out a little bit later in life, she really wanted to go on the Ellen show. Been there. Yeah, sure. Uh, and she writes Ellen a song, which I'm sure how many people have written Ellen a song to go on the show? I'm sure that happens all the time. Yeah. But Ellen, for some reason, likes Allie's video. And you can go look it up. Like her, Allie's song is great, but it was filmed on like a baked potato or something. I'm like, how did Ellen? <laughs> it this was not AK. Yeah. No, not at all. Anyway, so she gets on the Ellen show. Ellen is in love with her personality, like most people would be. And it's like, I want to have you back on the show. This is the, this is the story I probably told in the podcast. She goes to like some red carpet event. She's interviewing people on behalf of Ellen. Like, oh, this sounds familiar. She, her, they start talking about how she, Allie's never been kissed before. So Allie's first kiss was with Usher yes. on the red carpet. Yes, yes. Like yes, this girl's yes. just accomplished so much. She's so fun. Whatever. So this is the, the girl that I'm talking to on the phone. And I'm um, like, how, how's it been? She's like, you know, I've decided like, I really want to start taking my music career seriously. Like I've just kind of always like, I put out songs here and there, but I'm always just kind of like halfway doing it. And so recently I was like, I'm going to take a second job as a waitress so I can use that money to really like, you know, production time and whatever studio her. time. She's like, so I just wow. kind of started it um, a couple weeks ago or no, sorry, this past weekend, Jamie Foxx comes into the restaurant. I'm kind of busy. I'm not even really talking to him, but Django. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. You are unchained. Yeah. Like you drove here yourself. Golly. How'd you do that? <laughs> horse or no horse? Mm -hmm. Would yeah. you come in? And he uh she does end up kind of talking to him a little bit but she's not super i mean this girl's this girl's performed for stars she's not getting starstruck she's just kind of like oh whatever like really? jamie fox that's yeah. cool well jamie like gets her phone number for some reason and so ali's kind of like what is this about like why is he getting my phone number i don't okay. totally know what it's about but whatever she goes home that night she's like hey it worked for ellen i'm gonna shoot my shot but jamie fox sure so she she doesn't text him anything back like he texted her age hey it's jamie she texts him back a voice memo of a song she wrote for jamie and just sings him this song, doesn't hear anything back that night. A full 24 hours goes by, hears nothing. So she's like, okay, well, you know, I shot my shot. Yeah, Never going to hear from that guy. Again. There is no penalty to doing this. Okay. 48 hours goes by. Jamie Foxx sends her voice memo back. And it's just like, no way that was you singing. No way. You're telling me a white girl sounds like that? Why aren't you in the studio right now? Like, he's just like falling for this girl. Just like, what in the world? Like, your voice, you're so talented, you're so good. 
Allie's like listening to this, can't believe it. And it doesn't even know how to respond for like 15 minutes. Like, this is crazy. Jamie Foxx FaceTimes her and it was like, hey, I got to see you. Like, you need to come to the studio, yada, yada. I've been, ever since you sent me that voice memo, I've been working on your song, like making it a song. What? And she's like, what in the world? And so uh, he's like, some, when can you come over to the studio to like hear what I've been working on? So she's like really excited, but also like, is this, does he like my voice? Does he like my body? Like, okay. is this just, I okay. don't know, whatever. Goes over to the studio like late one night when she gets off work. And uh, also anyway, also sounds sketchy. Right yeah, there. <laughs> yeah. And like anyway. eleven eleven thirties when I get off, that's fine. Yeah, yeah come that's on exactly what happened. Really, but she's like, you know, I just I wanted to do it. I wanted to see what it was all about. Right. Goes over. I guess Jamie Fox is a like awesome dude. Never felt uncomfortable the whole time. They almost primarily talked about music. He's showing her this whole song. She sent me this like I, I don't know. I guess I can show it maybe, but like I don't know. I didn't tell Ali I was going to mention all this on the podcast, but. Like, I'll at least show you, Brad. I don't know if we need to show it on, like, the YouTube version. Okay. But here's a video of her in Jamie Foxx's car, like, in his Rolls Royce, and they're just, like, listening to, like, the song she made. <laughs> like, they're just dancing together. And she's, like, freaking out. Anyway, what, dude? So they do all that, and then, uh, apparently... She's in L.A., or where does she live? Yeah, she's in Los Angeles. Okay. So there's like friends now, I guess. And he's like creating this song for her. I guess he's a complete gentleman. He walked her out to her car when the night was over. She has a really crappy car. She can't, the handles don't work. So she has to crawl through the windows. So as he's walking her to her car, he sees her like crawl through the, the window. The handles don't work. <laughs> yeah. She had to crawl through Jimmy the window. Jamie Foxx could like change this girl's life in two seconds. Yeah. Like, hey, I'll buy you a car. I'll stop working this waitress thing. I'll pay for your studio time. Yeah. Go for it. Anyway, so I just thought that was super cool. Like, Wow. I mean, that sh that was like a 30 minute story. I tried to summarize it as quick as I could. There's a bunch of other cool stuff, but whatever. Right. Either way, I'm like, Ali, I can't believe you're talking to me. I can't believe you answered the phone. You're about to be so famous. <laughs> yeah, right. This is crazy. I'm so glad I got to talk to you before it happened. Holy so cow. Look out for Ali, Ali Shields. Beal Shields. Ali Be <laughs> Who is Ali Beal? Uh, Jessica Beal. Oh, yeah, Jessica Beal. Ali's, Ali's her sister. Ali and AJ. Mm -hmm. um, so, anyway, that was really fun. It was just fun to see like wow, dude. someone like she deserves this. You yeah. know, like this is fun. And it turns out Jamie Jane Goh is a great guy. Of course, as he far is. as we know, yeah. as of right now, as of right now, he's great. <laughs> they they never start out great and then like end up bad, you know. Yeah, so <laughs> I've never heard a story go like that. Uh, no, I'm sure I'm sure that's he's great. Uh, that's that's incredible, especially like not that it really makes that big of a difference, but I love that she is not necessarily down on her luck, but like she has a car that she has to crawl through the windows. Yeah, like I'm rooting for that person way more than I'm rooting for the person like who grew up wealthy and like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Was, was, had a music teacher her whole life, had a, you know, a vocal coach right. or whatever. Like, what's her other job? Like, uh, I think she works at like a Orange Theory or something like that. Okay, yeah, like just grinding. Like, yeah, that's seriously. awesome. And it was like, you know what? I'm going to take my music career seriously. And then <laughs> next day, like five days later, is in Jamie Foxx's studio, has his phone number. He follows her on Instagram. Does she even have like stuff on Spotify or anything right now? Like, yeah, you can listen to her stuff. She's got like three songs out. Wow. Under the name Albert. So good luck finding that. The SEO is not great. I was trying to find it. I was like, you know what? I should listen to some of our music again because I listened to it when it comes out and I kind of forgot. I was like, ooh, kind of hard to find. A-L-B-E-R-T? Yeah. Okay, we'll find it. Yeah, you got to scroll a ways. Wow. Um, probably go desktop version. No, I don't know. But um, <laughs> but yeah, she's great. So Dude, that could be a recurring awesome. thing. Like hopefully like six months yeah. from now, there's some update with Ali's music career. I just right. wanted to say that. Plant a little seed. Let's yes. see if it grows. We called it, guys, right now. <laughs> it was me. I Remember knew. that? Remember Ali Beal? <laughs> <laughs> Ali Shields, Albert. Dude, that's that's insane. Like the whole time she's telling me that story, it's like this is just unreal. This is so cool. And then she sent you that video. Like she sent proof. me a lot of stuff. She Here sent me like Jamie. Yeah, her original voice memo. She sent me Jamie Fox's voice memo back to her. She okay. sent me like a bunch of cool stuff dude, that that's I can so show for you later. Sick, but I don't know if I'm like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it is it a privacy shot? Not even said any of this. Right. I, we I don't should know. probably ask her before we like publish this. <laughs> I don't know. There, this is my story to tell. We have hundreds of thousands of listeners. Everywhere. I'm proud of her. Yeah. That's the moral of the story. So sheesh. Dude, that's amazing. Um, okay, I got some shout outs. You oh, some I shout always outs? forget shout outs and then I have to come up with them on the fly. <laughs> but <laughs> all right. Uh shout I only have three this week, so Okay, okay. Eh, I have I have four. Okay. Um no, two, three. <laughs> First one. Uh I got a shout out to Chipotle in okay. the Chipotle lanes. I went through the Chipotle lane again for the drive through to pick up our food uh on their way home from church yesterday. And they somehow accidentally gave me three extra Chipotle bowls. Three extra three bowls? Three extra bowls, baby. Yeah, that's a shout out right so, there. So, like, they gave me two different bags, and 
I had a little suspicion that maybe the second <laughs> one wasn't mine, but they said like, and I ordered, you know, stuff for Bo and Hattie and stuff. And sometimes when they don't have enough of the kids meal boxes, they put them in separate little bowls. And so I was like, maybe these are for them. And they both said, said Brad Ellis bag two of two. And so I was like, Oh, huh? I'm not. Okay. That's me. Yeah. Unless it's the comedian. I'm in the Chipotle. <laughs> That's right. Not Brad Deuce. Oh, we'll get there. Um, <laughs> but, and so that was my first shout out. I was just Chipotle. So now, so that day yesterday I texted Isaac and I said, what are you up to for lunch? I got three extra Chipotle bowls. If you want to come over <laughs> and he said, best text I've ever received heading that way right now. Like immediately <laughs> came over. I bet he was over in six minutes. He was like on his way to go eat lunch anyway. <laughs> yeah. It's like, this is, he was like, I was thinking about getting Chipotle. So this is perfect. Phenomenal time. It's also like kind of fun because they're not things that I would have ordered myself. Okay. Get you to know, expand like, a little yeah, bit. Like I like tonight for dinner, I had a Chipotle bowl with hot salsa. I've never had their hot salsa before. Pretty good. It's different. <laughs> it's like you're eating a whole different restaurant, but so the, the girl's names are Lindsay. Haley and Cindy, I think. So if you know those three girls <laughs> in Kansas City, yeah. Kath- Catherine's like, what if we could figure out who they are? I don't think so. Those are pretty common names. Sort of true crime podcast about these burrito girls. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. Um, so that was first shout out. Uh, second shout out, we, you said Brad Deuce. Second shout out goes to Joe Deuce. Somebody. Oh, uh, yes. Do you see this? Oh, see this. Yeah. Yeah. On our, on our Instagram. This is unbelievable. It's like Jamie Foxx stuff. They're like, yeah, Joe Deuce is a soccer coach at our college. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know he was a comedian. <laughs> and I was like, wait, 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 wait. What? Like, what college do you go to? Apparently it's Berea College, Berea. Okay. I don't know. I should have looked up where is that it was. Near Lexington, Kentucky? Probably. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you remember that. Um, and this person's like, yeah, I, I know who he is, but I mean, I don't think they play soccer or anything. So they're not like, they don't have a relationship with Joe Deuce. I heard that maybe he did some comedy on the side. I didn't know he was such a big deal. And I'm like, I don't know if he's that big of a deal, but he's like top three of like all of our, like of our favorites that we've ever like had okay. to perform with. Yeah. In what way? Like funny or like just best performer. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron Weber, Joe Deuce and some other guy. Okay. <laughs> we'll get it later. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, and then third shout out goes to super fan of the podcast, Andrew Shooty. He's a Kansas city kid. And I saw him at church the other day. I saw that comment. I was like, is he being jokey joke or you oh, yeah. actually saw him at church? I was walking past him and he was kind of making eye contact with me and smiling. I was like, do you, do you know who I am? And I, and I actually had met him once before he bought a cutting board from me. Ellis comes creations. And so, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm not necessarily asking like to get recognized at church, you know, Lenox the Baptist church, nine 30 service or anything. Service. I sit kind of in the down low on the <laughs> left, but, um, <laughs> like I don't, Whatever. I mean, there's worse places to be recognized in a church. <laughs> so that was just fun to, to just be famous, you know. Um, I do think that, like, the more jean shorts grows, the more we're going to get recognized. Cause, like, oh, I hope so. Because, like, right now, obviously, like, if people listen to our podcast, they might still not be, like, positive that it's us. But there's so many times I go out in public, like, very raggedy looking with my, like, woodworking stuff and, like, paint garb, you know. Yeah. And I just think to myself, gosh, I hope people don't see me. No, I hope they do. Really? Yeah. They get to see woodwork. Yeah. I don't know though. Like today I was at McLean's picking up breakfast and I had like a genuine, like not very big, like this big hole in my shorts, like by the thigh. And I'm like, that's (laughs) kind of embarrassing, (laughs) but it's like, I don't want to wear nice clothes to woodwork. Yeah, no, that's great. That's awesome. Church, the next Baptist church at 9 30 AM. Yeah. Lower left, lower left. Yep. With all the old people, you'll, we stick out like sore thumbs. I like to give a shout out to uh, mice. I was on the phone with my dad and he said, yeah, we got a little bit of issue at the house. We got mice. And I was like, oh, yeah, we got mice too. He's like, no, not like this. They're in your mom's <laughs> They're in your mom's car. No way. She has a mouse problem in her car. Dude, Catherine, when she listens to this, is going to laugh so hard because the other night when we came home from Chewy's, we went there for our date night. Love Chewy's. And like the styrofoam from the to-go uh, box was kind of like rubbing against each other. And she was like using her flashlight to look down. And I was like, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I'm just checking to see if there's mice down there. It sounds like there's a mouse. And I was like, oh, there's who, who's ever heard of mice in a car. <laughs> I gave her such a hard time for this. I was like, no, there's no mice in a car. It Your seems mom has Im- mice in cars. It seems impossible. But they have like they are laying traps. They are oh, like oh, my parents are like laying traps for the mice in the car, <laughs> which has got to be a little dangerous for my mom. Right. Like to have people ride with her or anything. Oh, yeah. But I mean, they continue to find like mouse pellets in yeah. different areas like in the cup holders in the seats or whatever like oh mice that's Catherine's are nightmare habitating in there no yeah so where's the worst part where, worst place to find a uh, mouse on your car um first place to i mean probably like on the steering wheel while you're driving <laughs> <laughs> like just run across the steering wheel yeah i think i think like finding like four of them right when you open the trunk 
<laughs> just and they're just scurry around yeah. and they don't know where to go they're and so so like once they kind of scurry for a while you realize like they're just gonna get rabid and like whatever like just <laughs> get, gonna get angry just get yeah defensive here so that's crazy okay shout out to trish for i want to hear the end of that story yeah hopefully t- you know there's more to come on that my dad oh. was on the phone with me he's like actually let's go see if there's anything on the traps and i was like this is gonna be awesome he's like oh we got ah oh, no we didn't i thought we had one so um, I, I want to know where you're putting the traps, Steve. Uh, <laughs> what kind of traps you're using? Because there's a million different traps out there. I've tried uh-huh. them all. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, what 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 are all your theories? Have you have you ever seen one? Have you seen one in the flesh yet? I want to know all about it. I can't imagine. I mean, I would hate getting in my car every day if I knew that mice were somewhere I, in it. I genuinely think Catherine would make me switch cars with her. Or just set it on fire. Claim yeah. <laughs> claim it was an accident. Yeah. Get awesome. a new one. <laughs> How's your mom? Th- you think she's freaking out? Uh, I'm sh- yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. She's gotta be. <laughs> It'd be alarming if she wasn't. I don't know if I would be freaking out truly, but Catherine would die. I would just yeah. try. I would have to go mind over matter. I just like don't think about it. Just don't yeah. think about it. All right, just drive. They're they're mostly out in the daytime. They're more scared I mean, of me. Nighttime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't drive after like it's dark outside. No way. No way. Not without like some popcorn in my hand, ready to like throw out at them. Like ready to like hey get away, go eat the popcorn. Right. That's diversion. <laughs> um. So that's wow. a shout out. Okay. Uh. Shout out to Fantasy Football almost being here. Not only is Gene Schwartz Comedy putting out a Fantasy Football video soon, but we were talking. I thought you were about to say we're going to do a league, and I was like, this is news to me. Well. Oh. Was it you who mentioned the Guillotine, guillotine league? league? Yeah. Do you want to do it? Let's do it with Ghosties. Okay. Yeah, because okay. we need a ton of people. Yes. So that's the thing. What do we need, 20? Yeah, I was going to say, what do we have to cap it at to make it right? Something like that. It's got to be a lot. Um, I guess we'll figure it out. We, we still have like a week to probably figure it out. Yep. I'm actually going to Branson this weekend for a fantasy football draft. I'm nice. excited about it. My fantasy football draft is while I'm in Hawaii. Okay. So not only is it at 6 a.m., but I'll be in Hawaii. <laughs> so I'm like, how do I? Oh, wow. Do you have any interest? Could I? Uh, I, I don't, don't really want to ask do. you to when, do what it. What day is it? I think it's like I don't know if you trust Thursday. me, dude. I'm, I'm like, I don't know anything about fantasy football this year. Well, but I don't care. To you probably. <laughs> yeah. We'll yeah, talk maybe, later. Maybe yeah. I will. Or yeah. If I can just find somebody to draft for me. Yeah. Um, by the time, what time out, is it what time is it local like a normal time i think it's probably like saturday at like noon oh they said it was thursday yeah as soon as i said that i, <laughs> I was like the time zone's not that different jake <laughs> yeah it's like a 48 hour <laughs> difference right <laughs> the more i think about it i think it's probably a saturday whatever we'll figure it out but okay. guillotine league it's a fantasy football league where people get like booted out every week it's and like so only cool the strong sounding. survive yeah shout out to mr steez he told me about okay, this yeah and yeah it's like and yeah, not only did your team lose, all the players on your team then go into free agency. They get redistributed. And that is what makes it so cool. So then the teams are stacked by the end. Yes. It sounds fun. It sounds so fun. So let us know in the YouTube comments if you're if you're interested. And then sometime next week, we'll have more of an official like sign up. Like yeah. first 20 to, here's the name, here's the password. First 20 to get in get or something like that. I, I think maybe we do like something and do do the rosters a little bit crazy. Like, like you know, I've never done anything like, too crazy with rosters like two QBs or like, you know, a Hunter. defensive player. Yeah. Or something. I don't know what you can do out there, but like in the guillotine league, cause eventually you're going to have a bunch of QBs in the, you know, available, you know, waiver wire kind of thing. So I think that'd be really fun. So it would be interesting to but it'd also be fun, like drafting, like, cause there's not 40 QBs that play every, that's what I was going to say. Like, you know, that first week, if there's 20 teams, there's only, you know, 32, it's a total crap shoot. So you got to start there. Are eight people are going to be starting backup QBs. <laughs> like I hope Taysom Hill gets some right. snaps or, you know, whatever. Oh, Taysom Hill will be valuable. He's yeah. a great, yeah, whatever. Anyway. Um, I do have another giveaway idea real quick. Let's hear it. Um, speaking of that kind of thing. Um, I think I'm just going to cap it with, uh, the 10 and $15 patrons right now. So if you're not a patron, get on there. Um, but we have, I think, three different shirts um, like that either got sent back because they were too small or the wrong size or whatever. And then I have two of those. And then I have a shirt from that Gunner was supposed to wear for our championship game that he was out of town for. So it's like it's a replica jersey from our championship Ooh. game. And then I have one as well. OK, so we have four different shirts. I don't know the sizes of them. I'm sorry. I didn't really plan this very well. I got a medium um, Amish jams. OK, there we go. Um, Still in package, new with tags. So this is kind of a random idea for the game. And we can maybe we could do a different contest every week, maybe like one one per week for giveaways and whatever. But for whatever reason on my phone, not for whatever reason, because I do this, I have uh, so many alarms. Same, brother. Yeah. Oh, you got more than me. Holy cow. I have so many. <laughs> um, 
that's like 80 plus alarms. Yeah. I think one time you and I like, I was like, guess, guess a time and see if I have it. <laughs> and <laughs> you that's didn't give it. Yeah. And so that's the game. That's, that's <laughs> going to be the 10 and $15 patrons. I'm going to put up a post <laughs> and you can comment. And here are the, 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 uh, the parameters are, you can comment two different times each. Okay. You get one entry for each one you get right. <laughs> but if you comment either from one to three AM or 10 to 12 p.m. You only get one guess. Does that make sense? Because those are like because those are I don't eight, have as many of those. Yeah. Which I I checked though and I have more than I thought I did. <laughs> I don't know why I have all these. Because what I do is I'm a big Siri guy, so I'm like Siri, wake me up. In oh, 20 it's minutes. always creating a new one. Right. Siri, you know, yeah, wake me up in yeah, wake me up in five hours. Wake like, me up when it's all over. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So um, that's the contest. I and like if that. you win, you win this week. You get to choose which of the four shirts you want. Cool. Um, so comment. On ten and fifty dollar patrons, thank you. If you're a five dollar patron, it's this time to it's time. Uh, upgrade. It's time. You got a lot of videos to go look back at. Yeah. So that's it. That's fun. Uh, I think I'll just end with one last thing. Um, yeah, I want to talk about the last. Or I'll, I'll, I'll summarize it quickly. But trying to get COVID tested for freaking Hawaii. Okay. Um, I let I rode in a van on the way to the wedding because this guy like. This guy that I know in Oklahoma City, he, he was going to the wedding. We were all getting ready at his house. He was like, I renovated this like huge van. If you guys want to take that away, I was like, awesome. Yeah, you say yes to that every time. Didn't have AC. So I feel like I was back in the limo because Ty was in there with me. But <laughs> either way, there were some uh, like Ty's sisters there, her husband, some other people, some like French friends, people I've like apparently met once before, but I think she's followed me on Instagram, it which I like made me feel bad. French friends. Ah, we. Ah, we, we. But they're like, what have you been up to? What's new? What's going on? I'm like, I'm going to Hawaii on Tuesday. That'll be fun. Like, we just got back from Maui. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to Maui. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. And they're like, you have to get your COVID test? I'm like, yes, I have an appointment tomorrow morning in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Like, I didn't pr procrastinate as bad as it seems. Like, I, I would plan this out because you have to get a test within 72 hours of your trip. So whatever. Guthrie, Oklahoma is like 30 minutes north, but it's so hard to get a freaking test. I was like, I'll take whatever. Yeah. And they're like, you don't want to go all the way to Guthrie. We went to Mercy Go Health. And that's awesome. They like give you your QR code, like right to you. They make it so easy. Like it's, you get in and out. Like there's so many around Oklahoma city. Just do that. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. This is one of the, a lot of people get in trouble because cute girls talk them into things. Uh -huh. I get in trouble because cute girls talk me out of things. They talk me <laughs> out of going to freaking Walgreens and Guthrie. I already had an appointment. Like what was I thinking? This is the classic, like I've never been to the Walgreens and Guthrie, but you don't want to do that because <laughs> yeah. that's not my experience. Yeah. This is my experience. So you have to do it exactly like I did it. And then a different part of the night happens. I'm talking to a different group of people and I'm like, I, this is my plan. This is what I'm doing. They're like, so I'm like, so I think I'll probably just wake up at 9 a.m. right when they open, call them, make sure they're available. Like, oh, it's a walk-in. Don't even call. Just like walk up. And I go, oh, screw me then. All right. I guess I won't call. <laughs> and so I legitimately, I go to bed at 4.30 a.m. that night. I wake up at 8.45. I, uh, I don't call. I go straight to, I try to get to Mercy, go help by 9 a.m. I walk in, the door is locked. Woman goes like, "Oh, we are having trouble today. You can't go here." I was what like, do you, What does that mean? We're I don't know. Having trouble. We're today. having trouble today. You can't come in. All right. Do you have any suggestions of where I should go? <laughs> uh, yeah, um, Quail Creek or something like that. Quail Springs. Like I, I'll figure out what that means. I guess. So then I drive like twenty minutes to this one. Uh, it was I like urgent care. Yeah. Okay. I check in with them, and uh, I'm like, "Are you guys still accepting walk-ins?" Yeah, of course, of course. Just check in here. Check in. All right, we have reserved your spot in line. You're good to go. Expect to be back by 7.45 p.m. No, 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 no. Okay, no, that's no, not no. going to work. So I go to a different one. That's still not working. You're like, how far away is Guthrie? <laughs> so this, by this point, I've missed my like window to get to Guthrie on time. So I'm like, oh, these girls. So then this very stressful moment of like, I have a very small window of like, I'm in Oklahoma City now. Walgreens has no more appointments the rest of the day. How am I going to do this? I book some like a couple of appointments for today when, or yeah. Yeah. When you're, I'm listening to, or when I'm recording this, uh, the day before I'm leaving for Hawaii, I do urgent care in the morning, Walgreens at night or mm -hmm. in the afternoon, go to urgent care this morning. All right. All right. What are you here for? And oh, first of all, I book an appointment and they're like, all right, go ahead and uh, fill this out and uh, sit in your car and uh, we'll call you when we're ready for you. I'm like, well, what did I even book an appointment for? If I got to wait in my car, I, I should have yeah. known. I should have just yeah. do the Walgreens thing. First urgent start. care is a mess, dude. I just, I let the cute girls talk me into anti-Walgreens. And it's like, the hard thing, like I said, is like, they've never been to Walgreens. Oh, they don't know, I don't know what that experience is like. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so then I'm sitting in my car and that's why I was so late to work today yeah. because this place took forever. Oh, that was, this is today that you're this, this, is this, this morning is sitting in the car. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just continuing to be stressed. I'm like, I'm going to miss out on Hawaii. 
why. And the worst part of it is I'm probably going to end up being positive. I'm going to somehow have COVID. I'm going to false positive test. <laughs> You're going to be stressed and that's going to trigger the, <laughs> the stress. The, is gonna, yeah. It's going to get in my mucus and yep. it's going to make me that's be how positive. Works. That's how it works. I finally get in there. The guy's like, all right, what are we doing today? I'm like, figured you should have known that because I, I, I just filled out What's 18 pages for, of yeah, paperwork. the point of this thing? Yeah. And I'm like, I just need a negative COVID test. I'm flying to Hawaii tomorrow. This guy's already giving me a hard time for procrastinating. I'm like, dude, just I... I'm stressed. Like, I got to be at work soon. Like, I, you know, whatever. Can we just get it done? He's like, what kind of test do you need? I'm like, well, I'm on the Hawaii travel restrictions website. It says it just needs to be NAAT, like nucleic acid mm -hmm. amplification test. It needs to be NAAT, like approved. He's like, I do not recognize those letters. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's not good. I was like, well, like, what do you normally do when people like need a negative COVID test for travel? He's like, I'm trying to think if we've ever had that situation come up. I'm like, there's no way I'm the first person to come through here who needs like a, a test for the situation. Dude, yeah. So he, he just can't fathom that I'm in this situation, that I would need <laughs> this 24 hours. And, and so I'm like, he's like, so is it the PCR or the rapid test? I'm like, I don't know. He's like, well, you need to get a hold of the airline. I'm like, I don't think Southwest Airlines is the person I call for this. You're a doc. I literally said to him, I was getting sassy. I was like, I have a marketing degree. Like, I don't, <laughs> what, what, I don't need to know you this information. That. Yeah. I was like, I don't like. Listen, buddy, I, you don't come. Yeah. You are the professional. If you had trouble with supply chain. <laughs> I could do a SWOT analysis. I wouldn't analysis. tell you to call Johnson & Johnson. <laughs> I do it myself. Huh? Gosh. I was like, I don't know. I've already got you halfway. Meet me halfway. I know what I need. Tell me what it is. Golly. He didn't know what type of test. This guy leaves the room. I've never done this before. I go rogue. I open the door. I start walking around urgent care. <laughs> I'm trying to find some healthcare professional who knows what in the world is going on. And so I start talking to different people like, hey, this is what I need. I'm trying to go to Hawaii. And sure enough, yeah, the doctor or whatever you want to call him I had was so ignorant, was so clueless. I'm glad I suck. Suck? Well... <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I suck. <laughs> I'm glad I sought after um, second and third and fourth opinions for people. This other guy is like, oh, yeah, you should be fine. You got to have the PCR test. I was like, oh, well, that guy told me it was up to 48 hours that you can wait. He's like, oh, no, uh, it should be eight to 12. And if you're flying, even shorter. I go, how does that work? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever. If you say it's going to be shorter. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. That's a, that's a life hack right there for you. If you just really say, want... no, I'm flying. I'm flying. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll get it to you in just a second. The lab will have. Just stay out in your car and we'll let you know when you're ready for <laughs> 7 you. 745 PM. So then I finally get back in to take the test and he's like, he's like, what are we doing? I was like, I'm going to go with PCR test. He's like, all right, great. Now I got to warn you, this is a pretty, pretty, uh, intense COVID test. I'm like, like is it worse buddy? than like the yeah. normal ones? I was like, I remember one time, you know getting the only one i've had it was pretty brutal he's like well this one let's see how, and he's having to read a paper to give a COVID test so i'm like i don't are you reading the instructions it's yeah. not a lincoln log yeah, just like dude. you could put it in there he's like well this is saying to put it in there until i feel resistance so i guess we'll do that i said hold, this guy's never done it before hold up put it in until you feel resistance i'm mm -hmm. not even gonna make the jokes you didn't want to make i'm just like yeah this is awful yeah i was like don't feel like you have to do that he puts that sucker so far into my brain <laughs> oh it hurt it hurt I was like blowing air out of like my nose and my mouth. I was like, oh, I'm like, I'm like clenching my teeth for you right oh, now. Oh, it was in there. And maybe like every nurse who's ever lived is like, yeah, we do that every day before we're, or, you know, I yeah. don't know. I'm probably like, did you look at him though and say, did you feel resistance? <laughs> Sean? I resisted. Huh? Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's what you should have, you should have been like, resistance, resistance. <laughs> resist. <laughs> resistance, 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 resistance. <laughs> Um, ow, 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 resist, ow, resist, ow, resist. Ow, ow, stop, ow. <laughs> so we get enough resistance, we're good. Then he leaves the room. I'm just sitting in there for, you know, crying five to 10 minutes, violated wiping my tears. Right. Yeah, I'm getting the, the, the Me Too hashtag yeah. ready for the, like, dude, have you ever heard of the Golly. Yeah. And uh, that's when I'm texting Trey, like, hey, I think I'm going to be pretty late today. Like, this is taking forever. Like, I'm just sitting in this room, just waiting for. Like, not even results. Like, he said it would take hours. So I don't know what I'm waiting for. Then this woman comes in who I've never seen before. She's like, Jacob? I'm like, yep. I'm like, am I good to go? She's like, oh, no, I still need to take your vitals. I was like, oh, I just needed a COVID test. She's like, ah, oh, well, we still, this is procedure. So then she takes my height, my weight, <laughs> but blood pressure. She Why? <laughs> I don't know. Why? She looks in my ears. She has me breathe. Oh, man. She, she made me brush my teeth for some reason. I don't even know <laughs> she why. She asked me how often I floss. Yeah. I don't know what this woman's profession oh, is. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> she also did the thing, which I've never understood. This. I got in a gown. I got in the hospital <laughs> gown. I don't even know why. It was a white polka dot t-shirt. Yeah. I was pretty used to it, but still, it didn't look good on camera. I don't know what was going on in there. 
I had to, she shampooed my hair, <laughs> gave me something called the MVP treatment. And I was like, what is happening here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like she shaved my neck. I was like, I'm not complaining, but I'm going to be late. She said, come back in three weeks. We'll do that all again for free. Right. Yeah. As long as you feel the resistance. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. What in the world? It was so strange. I was like, I'd already told Trey I was going to be late before yeah. I got my vitals checked. Yeah. And she also did the thing. I don't understand this. Like, I'm sure it does make sense medically. But like they have you breathe real in while they listen to you with the stethoscope, but they're listening in very weird spots. You ever notice this? Like, I kid you not. She was up in my collarbone today. <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> she's my collarbone and she's talking to me. So like, you can't hear whatever it is you're supposed to be hearing if there's an issue. She's like, Hawaii will be fun. I used to know this doctor in Topeka. He would go to Hawaii. All, and it's like, also take a deep breath for me. And he would go to Hawaii all the time. Like, there's no way you, in your earbuds yeah. you can hear like inflammation or whatever you're supposed to be hearing right, right now. And it's also, that's my collarbone. I don't breathe there. I'm not, I'm not trying to hate on all of urgent care workers everywhere, but that's like kind of the, the MO of urgent care. And I didn't really know that. Yeah. And now I know, I think Catherine, Catherine went to urgent care the other night. Cause she was like late at night. And she, she was like, literally there was, she said there was one other person, the whole thing. And it took him like an hour and a half to do it. Yeah. And she did the same thing as you not like really go rogue, but she was in her waiting room or whatever, like in, in her little room examination thing. And she had to like get out of the room to make sure like they weren't like shutting down. Like, are you still operating? Yeah. <laughs> like she like wanted to make sure that people were still there. She's like, I don't know no one's come to see me this whole time. Jeez. Yeah. So. And even after the vitals, I was there another five to seven minutes, probably just waiting on my phone. Just, you know, whatever. So did you end up going to Walgreens still just in and case? So, well, one last thing about urgent care. I finally, leave. they're like, all right, you're good to go. And they, they, you know, they give me nothing. They hand me nothing. And so I'm like, how am I going to get my results? And I'm like, Oh, we'll call you. And I was like, well, remember I need this for like Hawaii. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, okay. Oh, wow. I'm glad yeah. you said something. I was like, well, this is the whole. And so dude, <laughs> Then they go, I kid you not. I go, can I, I need some sort of electronic, you know, like proof of my mm -hmm. negative COVID test. Like, can you send me an email? And the guy goes, you need an email? Why don't you go ahead and have a seat? I was like, no, <laughs> just, I've written this down for you. I, I even signed in like electronically when I got here and I give you a paper version. Just email me. So oh. I just sit down and wait again. I, felt, I was already just like so hot. Like, I just know I'm going to be so late for work. And I, yeah. you know, just... I hated it. And so luckily I'd hedged my bets and I had, I had scheduled an urgent care appointment in the morning and a Walgreens appointment in the afternoon. And so the Walgreens was so easy. I swabbed myself in the drive through. She yeah. wasn't even watching me. I didn't even I know. Yeah. Yeah. Catherine didn't barely, barely put it up there at all. I, I, I found some resistance <laughs> just because I wanted to make sure I got it. You know, I, I didn't want it to be like inconclusive. Maybe or it goes positive if right. I don't get enough muc. I don't know how it works. Yeah. I didn't know either, but either way, both tests came back negative and I think now the stress is kind of gone. I think I'm good to go. I think I will make it to Hawaii, but yeah, I should have just freaking Walgreens Guthrie. It was right there. I let it, it slip right away. There. It was yeah, right there. So, all right. So I'll give you some advice for Hawaii and you have to follow it blindly. Okay. Okay. Don't listen to anybody else. <laughs> I'm not giving it to you right now. I mean, I can, but. Oh, you're saying like, once you give me the advice, do what you say to do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't listen course. to other people. I, no matter how cute they are. Cause I know who you are and I'm cute too. Yeah. 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 In my own way. Tubbo. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh man. That's awesome. Wait, do we got we got to follow up about the voicemails? Oh, I forgot about that. Dude. <laughs> yeah. I know it's long. How long have we been going? How long have we been going? We are already at oh my gosh, an hour 32. <laughs> right now, hour and a half. Voice okay. memos can wait maybe? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. We got to talk about this. Cuz this is awesome. So, what's his name? Tony. Tony. <laughs> you guys really liked Tony last week. Tony Hey Tony. Had, <laughs> you pick me up or what, darling? <laughs> that got me good. <laughs> anyway, Tony, uh, it was somehow not clear that this is the wrong phone number. We I mean, already had Boost Mobile. Sorry, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just reminiscing about this. Like, <laughs> I was the idiot. Like he called you out so quick. He called your bluff. Like he already, he already had Boost Mobile. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know anybody in my life that has Boost Mobile. Although we did get a comment from my boy Patrick, my Spokane <laughs> friend, yeah. right at like midnight last night when the episode came out. He goes, I already liked it. This episode is called Boost Mobile. I hope you guys are trashing on it because I have Boost Mobile and it sucks. <laughs> and then I saw a couple hours ago he commented, okay, I didn't get what I wanted, but honestly, it was way better. Yeah, so that was great. Shout out, Patrick. Um, but okay. so Tony didn't get the hint and Tony kept calling. And I counted the, the 48 hours following, uh, you know, last week's podcast recording. Tony called me 45 times golly dude all through the night i got a voicemail as late as 4 30 a.m i got probably 20 voicemails out of him and it got to the point where i, I had to block him like even though it was unknown number uh, somehow the phone knows so i was able to like block his number and uh maybe i shouldn't have because it was you know we are gonna get some content out of this but if your phone's going off day and night oh yeah it was just too it was too much to keep up with and so 
I didn't even have this idea. Brad was like, dude, we should go through the voicemails. And I was yeah. like, yeah, we probably should. Yeah, there's like, there was like some on there that Jake hadn't even listened to yet. And I was yeah. like, you gotta listen to this guy. <laughs> so um, I forget which one we're going to start with. What's oh, the... 240 something. Okay. Oh, I just, no, 241. 241 a.m. Okay. Oh, 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 here we go. 240 a.m. Okay, I guess you don't want to talk, Michelle, or anything, so it's up to you. I guess it's your loss, not mine, so. Mm. I will find something else. Okay. Thanks for taking up my time. I won't really waste any more time or effort. So uh, I guess I will talk to you later. Hope you have a good night. I hope uh, whoever you're with or whatever, whatever you're doing is worth it. Thank you later. Bye. Okay. So it looks like Tony's cutting it off. 241. Yeah. 241 a.m. on August 20th. That's he the very cutting last it off. voicemail you got from him. Yeah, that's it. He said, you know, you're out of my life. I don't want to talk to you anymore. I don't want to waste any it's more of my loss. time. You're lost. You're lost. Not mine. Hope you're enjoying whoever you're with or whatever you're doing. Yeah. But then the weirdest thing happened. <laughs> At 304 a.m., we got another voicemail. <laughs> 23 whole minutes. I was just calling to see where you're at. <laughs> see what you're doing. How come you're ignoring me and blowing me off and then avoiding me? That's all right. I guess I'll go find some place to park or whatever. Or go play a few games and stuff for a little bit and then go find a place to park. So I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay, so we have a little a bit of a character games. arc. We know a little bit more about Tony now. Yeah. At 3 or 4 a.m., He's a fruit ninja guy. Some sort of lifestyle where he's going to go park and play some games. Mm -hmm. What does that Maybe mean? Maybe he has a few friends. He's playing spike ball in the parking lot. Could be spike ball. Could be spike ball. <laughs> could be Candy Crush, Farmville. Don't could put be, it past. He sounds like a Farmville guy. Could be Jenga or the knockoff Jumbling Towers. <laughs> Either one of those. The Aldi brand. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's the last we heard from Tony. Um, well, except for, <laughs> except for another voicemail <laughs> or voicemail. 20 minutes later. Yeah, that's so just trying to get old of you. See where you was at and everything's okay. I guess you're with some guy or somebody. You know, and you can't talk or whatever. It's okay. Well, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Oh, more. Wait. Wait for it. I don't waste my time anymore. <laughs> See you. <ya. laughs> Dramatic boss by Tony. He's like, maybe there's something else I can say this voice uh, Anything so else? Really? I won't waste my time anymore. I love the idea of waiting 10 more seconds to say, I don't want to waste any time anymore. If Michelle's listening to that. She's like, okay, he's right. Oh, uh, you know what? You know what? Maybe. Does Tony not think that maybe Michelle's sleeping at this point? Yeah. What kind of lifestyle what time was, was Michelle that? 340 something? That was 329 a.m. 329 a lot of most people in the world are sleeping at this point tony why not just wait till the morning yeah i don't know and there was another couple of pretty good voice mails in here but they're all from they just say unknown they all say unknown and it's hard to sort through they're all they all look identical <laughs> so i don't know where it's at but there's another one that we listened to what did he say is like i know you were trying to trick me but i saw you behind the semi trailers rolling a joint yeah, he said something <laughs> about a church too, didn't he? Like around the corner of the church with the trailers, roll the joint. Yeah. He said some other things we can't repeat. <laughs> and like <laughs> some accusations. Yeah. So I don't know. I think Tony might be better off without Michelle. Hard to say, but maybe. Or maybe Michelle. I think they're better off without each other. Yeah. At least. They just need to find different people. Uh so I unblocked Tony's number before we started recording, just hoping he would call back. But by this point, he has to get the hint. Like the, the phone calls have not been going through for five days. So yeah. hopefully he's done. But hey, if we get some more voice memos, voicemails, more content for next week. How in the world did he get your numbers confused with Michelle's? That's what I want to know. And he's so confident that he did talk to Michelle on my number. Right. So I'm like, is Michelle some like, I mean, I think it's a pretty logical explanation. She's some sort of CIA, some sort of tech expert, knows how to reroute you cell can. phones you to can do that really easily trick people days. like Tony. Yeah. That's what VPNs are, I think. Yep. I'm pretty sure that's what VPNs are. Yeah, yeah. So it's like Veer. Mm -hmm. V is for Veer around Veer phone numbers. personal numbers. Personal numbers. Or, yeah. yeah. 
Either way, <laughs> phone or personal, it's kind it of... It doesn't matter. It's Yeah, it's it's bilingual. It's like MC. is like master of ceremonies, master of communication. It, it's, it's all a, good. It's, it's a master. At, <laughs> it's a veer. It veers or, around. Yeah. So huh. anyway, I just love Tony, man. Yeah, so he's been chatting me up. I've been listening to a new podcast called S... Not, new to me, S-Town. You heard of that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I listened to that. That one's got some twist in it. Yeah, it does. It you kinda, just now listen to the I know, isn't that funny? <laughs> like, like, like everyone's always like talking about true crime podcasts and I'm like, I'm not, I'm not into that thing. Like, oh, they're phenomenal. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to, I honestly, it kind of ended okay, but I think I'm going to get into some more. So if you're out there, ghosties, I'm once again asking for recommendations. <laughs> Best true crime podcast. Do you know about cereal? I know about it. I've never listened to it. Oh, though. definitely listen to cereal. Right. Wasn't that like the thing that inspired S town more or less? Or like I, the same I, people? Yeah. Kind of same format and stuff. And it was what, like, I think led to kind of the podcast boom a little bit. Yeah. At least as far as I'm concerned. Catherine listened to it, you know, whatever that was five years ago when it yeah, came out. But it was awesome. Okay. That I'll, I'll check it out. Up and vanished. It was only like seven episodes too, which was great because then. In and out. Yeah, exactly. It's a woodworking day. Um, <laughs> but that guy kind of reminded me of the, one of the, one of the characters on that yeah, show. Yeah. That could be, that could be him. Yeah. Maybe. Um, Tony. Okay, let's do at least a couple voice memos. Okay. I have so much to still do. I haven't even started packing. I got laundry I'll still in the washer right now. I got so much to do, but we got to at least do some voice memos because we do have some good ones. Um, which one do I want to do? Do the do the really, really good one. Oh. Do you mind? Duh. Uh, I don't know do which it. one that is, but here's one. The amazing one. Howdy, Jake and Brad. Tis I, Ray Woods. I'm currently driving through nowhere in Arkansas, and I just passed a sign that said, Someone stole the money in bright <laughs> yellow in someone's yard. I would just love to know what y'all think the backstory for that is. That's town. And secondly, <laughs> I don't know if y'all have already answered this, but I've just been thinking about it a lot. Um, if y'all were on The Bachelor or Bachelorette, not sure which one, I've never actually seen it, but I do know that they have to do like a cool walk-in thing, like for a first impression. What would you guys do? Personally, I would drive up in a van full of golden retrievers and then just like kind of hang for a bit. Anyways, that's it. Y'all have a nice day. Bye. Okay. I'm going to give you just a real quick hard time that you don't know Bachelor or Bachelorette. But it's like, on your mind? Oh, wait, sorry. You, yeah, we have two things well, to say Well, she's here. just like, I don't know which one the Bachelor or Bachelorette <laughs> you would be on. Like, yes, you do. Like, <laughs> like I've, I, I've never really watched the show, but I know enough about what it is. Everyone knows. And she's The like, one that's The Bachelor has all the girls on it with the one guy. Who is The Bachelor? Yeah. Yeah. Ray, you know. She's like, I've never once seen this show, but for some reason, I can't <laughs> stop thinking... About like intricacies of like certain episode formats. So you, and like, don't, you don't buy it that she hasn't seen the show. I or at least that she's been thinking of it. It's on her <laughs> mind a lot. I don't yeah. know. I, I've I've never been like, I wonder, okay, if I was on Love Island, this show that I've never seen, how would I or I don't even know yeah. what to say. Yeah, I, right. the show. Like, I, don't <laughs> I wonder if on the third day, just like they had it, you know, just like Tony and Sarah, uh Tony and Michelle. Um okay, first of all. What was the first thing they said? The the robbing thing? Who stole all the money? Where did all the money go? I think that... That's pretty funny. That is a funny sign to see in yellow. In yellow, for sure. Uh, where'd all the money go? I don't know what that means. Monopoly enthusiast? For some reason, I can just... I'm, I'm just on the gold. Like, thinking of gold. Because mm. of yellow. They they don't believe that money is backed by gold anymore. Mm -hmm. That's the stance they're trying to take. Yep. Yeah, they don't... I think that's what it was. Like, where'd all the money go? Because they have they used to have stacks of gold. <laughs> Like proving their wealth and now it's gone. More blockchain people. Uh -huh. I would say, did she just use in Arkansas or did I just? She did. Yeah. Okay. Well, small town Arkansas. When I think small town Arkansas, I think, yeah, like cutting edge of like blockchain and like cryptocurrencies. And that's probably it. It's well, like, that's what they're known for, right? Uh, like Cer Cersei's the blockchain capital of the world. Yeah. The Razorback State. Yeah. Uh, Rogers is, yeah, big, big cryptocurrencies. <laughs> and I think 90% of the world's Bitcoin mining computers are in Conway. I know that Conway, that's Arkansas. Right. Yeah. 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 It's like, and Little Rock is thinking about changing their name to Little Block, <laughs> right? Isn't that what it is? Little Blockchain. Yeah, yeah Little Blockchain. <laughs> so now th that there's that, right? <laughs> there's that Little Block. <laughs> Jeff Bauer's going to love that joke. <laughs> See you, Jeff. What was All the right. second thing? Oh, what would our entrance be? I don't know. I like the golden retriever thing, bringing something that's universally loved and like you don't even have to do the work. Just like let someone else be like bring a celebrity. Like if nothing's off the table, bring Tom Hanks. I'm going Jamie Foxx. He's so swag. And I have a connection to him now. Like a loose connection. Yeah, Tom Hanks. I would bring Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks is a good one because Jamie Foxx is kind of kind of hot. Tom yeah. Hanks, no one I'm really finds him attractive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're still, you're still the looker in that walkout. <laughs> I was just thinking like just 
like have like pretend like you know all the guys because like i'm imagining when you're walking out there's other guys that are already there yeah like dap up all the guys and don't even pay attention to the girl and then eventually like oh my gosh sarah oh my god I didn't oh even that's know why it. i'm here yeah yeah yeah. Oh my i'm gosh. just so content being single um you know that i i don't need this so confident in my yeah. current walk of life right didn't you say it's like psychological warfare in that one gene Schwartz video like not texting a girl back for a few days, like oh, psychological yeah, yeah. warfare. What you want to do is manipulate them. Yeah, exactly. yeah, and get into their mind and uh, yeah, really just deceive them. Yeah, I've been married for so long. I don't, I don't even know how to think about stuff like this. But that's my answer: is just dap up all the guys and ignore <laughs> the girl, and not even really address the Tom Hanks thing either. And yeah, what a power move! <laughs> like, oh, Tom! Yeah, Tom. yeah, yeah. Are you on the show? Or no? Wait, you were in the limo. Wait, oh my gosh! Oh I forgot. yeah, that's we, right. We didn't talk much. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Tom on. Tom. <laughs> just puns with his name yeah thank you thank you very much thank you yeah 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 like uh, yeah tom was pretty quiet in the car mainly because of the puns i kept using with his name but i don't know i think he's kind of standoffish i don't know i mean yeah Stan thomish i don't think he had a seatbelt on because he went over it <laughs> he's gonna be so bad <laughs> i knew <laughs> we went over a speed gump <laughs> <laughs> uh I feel like he's so standoffish because he might have some sort of disease. Do you think it's the terminal? <laughs> uh, um. Honestly, I'm, I'm worried about Tom being around Sarah because she's attractive. I'm afraid. <laughs> Never, I, can't say, I can't say it. You want me to say it's Buzz Lightyear's friend? <laughs> I can't. Oh, man. That feels like rated P for Patreon. Uh, yeah. Um, is something like <laughs> these are so dumb i don't even i don't even get it. i was trying to think of something with carl hey ratty <laughs> so something with his like his is something on, like weird on tom's watch like his hands kind of hey ratty <laughs> nice hey the new voice so i would come out with golden retrievers <laughs> <laughs> all right go ahead all right let's listen to one more hey jake and brad this is jewel man i am jewel chandler man. man and lucy's man sister we also have older sister named how many, taylor how many girls are but in that family I'm probably more of the weird sister the one that probably fits more of the ghost runners podcast vibe honestly um okay, okay. and i'm like the third to listen so that's really exciting um but Welcome. this next year or in fall of 2022 i'm starting to apply for counseling school so that's super fun um and I was wondering what like advice would you give if you were counseling someone? Maybe like some funny advice, some out of the box, some, you know, little different, little weird, little quirky advice. Um, you guys are awesome. I love listening to the podcast. I like, first of all, what's up, Joel? Glad you're listening. Uh, a lot of sisters and a man family. Yeah. Interesting. Um, God's, God's got a sense of humor once in a while, doesn't, doesn't he? Doesn't he? Doesn't he? Dude, that was what they get the wedding. Oh, no, I talked about this on the Patreon video, didn't I? Yeah, the, the pastor was just trying Oh yeah, a few too many jokes. Also, he kept using possessive pronouns, which just throw me off like, well, we're here. We did it. And it's like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if we, we are we, here. Like, yeah. they are, the bride and groom are here. They did it. It's like watching uh, the Chiefs and being like, come on, we just need to stop. Come on, this is big for we us. We do this every time. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Jewel, love the question. I just wish it was not so specific. You know, that's the problem. Like Brad, for instance, let me ask you, if you were a doctor, mm -hmm. what are some things you would say? Okay. I would say, um, I wouldn't eat that second, uh, bacon cheeseburger. Ooh. Okay. Brad, what if you worked in sales? I would say, what are some things you would say <laughs> just in general? Yeah. Uh, I would say ooh, ooh, if you were like a school bus driver. Okay. What, what about, are things you would say? What about if you, uh, did finance? What, just, are some, what are some things I would say? No, just just what about if you did it? How would <laughs> what, you feel about what it? What if you did? What if you did finance? Um, if I did finance? What if you um, thought about doing something in trading? Like, what would you say then? Like trading. If you had a job that dealt with business, mm -hmm. what are like some fun things you would say? If you were a businessman. If you were a businessman, what would you say? Business man with two ends. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you do? If you sold Christmas trees, what would you do? If you had a like a job that required you to like work with other people, mm -hmm. like what are some of the things? Like what would you like when you guys are all together? Like what would? If how would it go? If you're an Enneagram one through four and a half, what would you say <laughs> as a counselor? <laughs> if you uh, slept Let's on say, the right side of the bed, what would you say? What would you say if you like just got your hair cut and then you're talking to like someone else? What would you? What would you say? What would you say? We're dying to know. 
<laughs> Remember that? That was from the man sisters. Yeah, that was Chandler Man. Yeah, she would ask a voice memo and be like, "We're dying to know. We are dying to know. We did it. It's ours time." Jewel, here's what I would say as a counselor: I would say, "Never go to bed angry." <laughs> Actually, you know what? I would, I would like. No, I'd say never go to bed angry. Still, I think that's a good advice. Um, I don't know the answer to these questions. <laughs> well, let, let's try to give it a, more, a little more specific into it. Okay. okay. Let's say Brad, I'm counseling you. Yes, I am having trouble. Okay. In what would I say? Yep. <laughs> Persevere. <I'm, laughs> James one, two. Like, let's say I'm having like issues and that's why I came to a therapist in the first place. What would you then say back to okay. me? Like, What kind say, of professional advice? I would say it sounds like you're going through some stuff right now. Dang, you um, nailed it. I did. And maybe it's because of your past or your current like stresses. Honestly, it's a little bit of both. Really? Yeah. That's usually how it goes, buddy. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I think we'll need to go in for another session. You know? Really? Yeah. Maybe up to twice a week. I was thinking twice. Do we need to go twice a week? You think? Can you do three? I can do, I can do three. What? Well, yeah. Well, but when we do three, it starts being an hour and a half long sessions just because like if I'm seeing somebody regularly, I'm going to want to see him like really regularly. Really regularly. You know, like yeah. R squared. So um, how about we just do, but the first half hour, I forgot to tell you the first half hour is cryogenics. Oh yeah. And so it's just, just complete, cry. Mm-hmm. Just cry. That's what it is. Let's talk about your genetics. Cry and where'd, talk you, about your genetics. where'd you come from? Mm-hmm. Who are you? Let's, let's right. get up that tree. Yeah. We just listen to family tree. We just listen to the who, who are you for, <laughs> we let's do it four times through. It's a pretty long song. So that takes 30 minutes. <laughs> That's most of it. That's yeah. most of the time. <laughs> That's what I'd say. That's what I'd say. <laughs> if I'm, if you're going through trouble, that's why we do some cryogenics. Now that's only if your patient has some sort of issue. Mm-hmm. If they're good. Let's say if they just come in saying like, what's up? I would say, what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I would, it, what's up? I would say, uh, this guy. Huh. Cause I went to counseling school. I legitimately thought about going to therapy and being that second guy of like, I don't have anything specific. Just like, Oh, that's dangerous though. I feel like, cause then they'll then try you to find stuff. Try stuff. I was legitimately going to do it, but then it was like, it's just very expensive mm-hmm. to get that kind of, you know, work done. If that's the right phrasing. And so I was like, well, if nothing's wrong, I don't know if I need to be spending this kind of money on it. But I was intrigued by just like, I don't think it would hurt. We take care of no. our physical health. Let's let's take care of our mental health. I'm but, a big fan of like introspective stuff like that. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Better help, by the way. When I dated that psychologist, it was phenomenal. It was awesome. Is that really thing? Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> She's a teacher of psychology. Okay. I mean, when I dated that football player, no, he was a high school coach. <laughs> <laughs> he was a secondary coach for the middle school. I'm just kidding. Love you, Kay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, let's go to some reviews of the week. Mine is short, but sweet. Mm-hmm. Me and my bros listen to the pod a lot. One of them has listened to every episode at least three times. Every time we were in the car together, all we hear is Jake and Big Daddy. Every Monday I hear a new Ghost Hunters podcast at least four times. This podcast is hilarious and clean and the best. Keep it coming. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. All right. Mine is from DVD Beach. And it says, these, this podcast is What's Up. It's actually a really nice one. I don't know why they have such a weird username but uh this podcast is like tv to my ears i anxiously await for the next episode while listening to one of the previous ones 2019 and 2020 were some of the roughest years of my life but finding the ghost runners was definitely the best part i'm a 14 year old girl and the oldest in my family and when i was 12 my parents got divorced um i already had severe anxiety and depression and a lot of problems with my health throughout the years as you can imagine the problems got worse after the divorce ended up getting um just had some lots of issues it basically says yeah uh, developed ocd uh, Tourette since it started and I've been kicked out of my grandmother's house and now live with my two brothers, uh, all these other family members, all to say I'm in a really hard place right now and struggling quite a bit. Jake and Brad are just about the only people that make me laugh anymore. And with every new episode I listen to, I get to go into my own little world of ghosties. Thank you, Jake and Brad for helping me get through this t- difficult time in my life. Although you may not know it, you help me so incredibly much. And I thank God for you every day. I hope that y'all's families will continue to bless those around them and keep their faith strong in the Lord. I love y'all. Love you too, DVD BGXW. Wow. That was really sweet. Um, yeah, I don't even know what to say to that except just some vulnerability in the podcast app. Yeah. Wow. That's, That's awesome. cool though. We like to see that stuff. So Jewel, if you if you figure out who this is, maybe have some discussions with this girl because it sounds like they could use therapy. Oh, Jewel Man. Jewel Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. It sounds like they're going through some stuff. And obviously we like being an outlet to that, but you know. We're here to do our part. Whatever. Yeah. 
you need us. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that is really cool. Obviously, we've said it a million times, but it's just cool to, to hear things like that that we're obviously not directly trying to do, but um, we're affecting people one way or the other. So <laughs> I'm glad it's in a positive way. Mm-hmm. Don't yeah. tell us if it's negative. <laughs> Actually do, in a way. If it's really that negative, like, hey, like you're ruining my life. I would like to know that it's so I can knowing. potentially stop. Yeah. Tell yeah. Brad and then he'll decide if he's going to tell me. Ellis Custom Creations on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So, Brad, would you like to end this episode with a jingle? Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> my computer's about oh, to die. This was written by Haley Hutchins and her sister, Anna. Oh, I combo. I tell that sometimes. Yeah. Three finger combo. Yep. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the pod is always on time. It is. Usually. Always. It's always on a Monday. Always on a Monday. Yep. On time. On time. On Monday. Some people do get frustrated if it's not up at like 12 o'clock. Yeah, it's usually for a good reason. (laughs) It's not just because I'm laying in bed like, I don't want to push upload. Tony keeps calling me. I can't do it. (laughs) I can't use my phone. So shout out Haley Hutchins and Sister Anna. That was fun. Shout out to all the ghosties. All the just, there's so many Gene Schwartz comments riddled with ghost runners. I mean, today there were so many just boost mobile comments and just like... Micah Sterling with the March Madness. Just no, no quit in that guy. Don't quit, Micah. Yeah. Keep it up. Don't do it. <laughs> I actually like, I'm not ever going to pressure you. I'm not going to like force your hand on it, but I was kind of hoping that this was the week, but I'm glad it's not. Really? Okay. We'll get there. I think we're going to get there. I think we need to hit a certain something, a certain milestone, whether it's, I don't know what it is, maybe Patreon members or something. But then again, if we do it, like if we do that, then we'd need to only do it on Patreon. So I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Figure it out. It's so worth it, guys. <laughs> it's so worth it. It's so worth it. Well, this yep. has been episode 121. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Jake, have fun in Hawaii. Thank you. Um, have fun in Kansas. Ann Branson. Don't Ann Branson? Southwest Missouri on your feet. Fantasy football. Ultimate Foursquare. We're playing some Ultimate Foursquare. Okay. Maybe that's the game that Michelle was playing or that Tony wants to play. I don't know. Behind the semi trailers. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it'll be fun, man. All right. Okay. Talk to you guys uh, next Monday if you want. See you then. Love you guys.